if you're in debt, uh, money only pulls out <laughs> bad <laughs> negative emotions such as shame, guilt, frustration. But it's because you look at money almost like a punishment. But I always advise people who are in debt uh, to. If we have a, you know, a wound financially, or we're in debt and we're ashamed of it, and we're not able to get out of that debt. How would you say we start the process of healing our financial identity or wounds that hold us back from financial abundance? Uh -huh. Luis, thank you. That's a very good question. Uh, oftentimes, money can bring the worst and the best uh, uh, emotions out of you. Uh, negative emotions could be anger, frustration, resentment, and the good uh, positive uh, emotions could be like love and happiness. And if you're in debt, uh, money only pulls out <laughs> bad <laughs> negative emotions, such as shame, guilt, frustration. But it's because you look at money, uh, debt, uh, almost like a punishment or uh. curse. But I always advise people who are in debt uh, to turn that uh, view uh, differently. So I would say, you know, uh, like five years ago, ten years ago, you borrowed the money from the bank or friends. That means they trusted you. They trusted your earning ability so you can pay back. So debt is not a curse or burden. It's a trust placed on you. You know, a, a totally stranger bank, they knew, they figured out you'd be able to pay back. Isn't that great news? Yeah. Yeah. If you cannot trust that, I don't know if I can pay back, they did. So that means they have a, a better trust than you. So you can thank them for trusting you. So if uh, it's like your parents or grandparents who believe in you more than you do yourself. Sure. So those financial institutions are like mentors and supporters. So uh, you can, uh, I think, pay back uh, their uh, trust every, every month. So interest is uh, a form of appreciation from you. Thank mm -hmm. you for trusting me. So mm. every time when you think of that, instead of feeling, oh, I'm burdened, I'm chained, you know, like a slave, just think of it this way. You know, you have such a trust and love from a total stranger, your ability to pay back. So you just imagine uh, a few bankers' faces and just say, thank you so much for trusting me. Thank you mm. so much for believing in, in my paying back abilities. So to appreciate, to, to answer, uh, to respond to your, uh, trust and love, I'll make sure to pay back every time. And to show my uh, appreciation, I pay you back the interest. So mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, every time you, you take see a bill, instead of looking at it, oh, no, uh, like a curse <laughs> or a death sentence, you know, you can say, oh, thank you. Mm, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can turn it around. Yeah. Was there ever a time in your life where you struggled with money? Actually, to be honest, I have been lucky uh, to be able to uh, live my life without struggling with money. My father taught me well in my early teens and 20s, so I actually never borrowed anybody from, from anything. I borrowed $10 from a friend in college, but that's about the, the only uh, cash I needed. I bought my real estates in cash, uh, mm. bought cars, cars in cash. Uh, so. I didn't want to build an empire, so I, I, I'm not a billionaire, but I have enough financial resources uh, uh, so I can f uh, act to live freely. But I never um, borrowed any money or I've never been in a financial situation that I uh, needed to um, struggle uh, because uh, I had always great people, great friends who helped me with money, investing, and really? Trust. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. So in that sense, I cannot really teach people how to get out of a bad place. Where well, many financial experts say, I had only $2 in my bank account, and <laughs> now look at me. You know, I have been uh, fairly wealthy all my life that mm -hmm. way. Gotcha. And what was another lesson that your mentor told you after he said, forget about money? What was the next few lessons that really inspired you? I think arigato, arigato your money is a word he's, he, he used. 
So what can I do? You know, I wanted to know the、uh, stock tips. Okay, buy Apple、mm. <laughs> or buy Sony or whatever that is. And、uh, he, he said, Arigato your money. And that is a shortcut to、uh, financial independence. <laughs> and Arigato your money. And then that's it. You know, my turn is gone. And there are like、uh, 100 other people、uh, wanting to ask him. Questions. You know, if you're with Warren Buffett, you cannot, you know, <laughs> get his attention more than two minutes.、Sure. So I figure, I try to figure out, I think I told your money. And、uh, I just looked at everywhere, but there's no, no, nothing about thank your money. And then I became a student of Wahe、uh, personally, so I could spend hours, I spent hours with him afterwards. So, I could really get to ask him about the meaning of、uh, thanking your money. He said,、uh, when money comes in, say, Arigato, or thank you to money. And when you pay money, when money leaves your life, once again say, Arigato to your money. You bow to your money and then、uh, really thank the money for staying with you. Even though、mm. it's a short visit, thank you for staying. So, money will love that. And then at night, money will just start to chatter. Ken is a good place. <laughs> you should go. <laughs> I like that. And then money will come back. So I, I couldn't really figure out why he was joking or not, but I think he sounded serious. So his secret is thanking your money. And I asked him why. He said, Human mind can only focus one thing at a time. So if you focus on thanking your money, appreciate, appreciating your money, money appreciates. So, his teaching is very Zen. So, once you think subconsciously, money is great, money is fun, money is lovable, and then you will become a magnet to money.、Mm. But, but if you just go for money,、uh, money will run away from you. It's like、uh, dating. You know, if you just try to get girls or boys, they run away. But if you don't, they'll come to you. Before the interview continues, if you feel like you're not living your most authentic life, not leaning into your purpose, and not living the life that your future self would be extremely proud of, I've written a new book called The Greatness Mindset, and I think you're gonna love this. Through powerful stories, science-backed strategies, and step-by-step -step guidance, The Greatness Mindset will help you overcome all the different challenges in your life to design the life of your dreams and then turn it into your reality. Make sure to click the link below in the description Description to get your copy today. Okay, let's get back to this video. Can you just talk about this concept of being a money magnet、mm -hmm. and how someone can become more of that?、Mm -hmm. So,、uh, once again, you know, we experience、uh, life、uh, according to our beliefs. And some people have、uh, better luck than others. And、uh, some people work so hard, but they're getting minimum wages.、Mm -hmm. So, you have to find、uh, your place. Your seat,、uh, your reserved seat is what I call.、Uh, a lot of people try to sit on uh, uh, other people's seat, <laughs> which is wrong because your seat is reserved somewhere else. And if you don't sit on other,、uh, other people's seat,、uh, what happens is that you get so depressed、uh, and then you feel so meaningless, you know, so and all that because you cannot really feel、uh, life. But once you sit on your seat, You are so deep, deeply connected with,、mm -hmm. with your life purpose, then you start,、uh, your magnetism uh, starts, um, uh, gets turned on. So, how does someone know where their seat is and know how to sit in it and be happy with their seat? Yeah, so the only thing is ask your heart what your heart tells you. If you're excited about it, you're going closer. Mm. And it, so, like,、um, it's like hot or cold, right? So, if you feel more excited about like doing this, this is it, this is it, this is it. So, you have to have your heart guide you where you're supposed to be. So, always listen to your heart, you know, and then if your heart gets excited about a certain thing, you're just getting closer、yes. to your seat. Do you have a meditation or affirmation process、mm -hmm. for someone on how they can? Trust their heart,、mm -hmm. listen to their heart、mm -hmm. deeper to know they're on the right path. Right. Do you have something that you, you use yourself、mm -hmm. or that other people can use?、Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I always、uh, try to have a few minutes.、Uh, say you know, you're waiting for a car, you know, an Uber, or just waiting for something. 
I find a few moments and then just try to find my center, you know, and then <clears throat> and I just uh, go deeper and, and figure out uh, where I want to go and just listen to my heart. What does my heart say? Am I excited about this mm. or not? Am I trying to get uh, money? Uh, so I'm not excited, but I have to do this to bring money on the on food on the table. So I always check what my heart tells me. You're always listening to it. What happens when your heart <clears throat> is not excited? Like you have, a, let's say you have a project you're working on. Right. You're working. I'm, I'm assuming all of your books you're excited about, but maybe there's an event you're supposed to go to, or I don't know something that you said yes to, mm -hmm. and you realize your heart is not excited about this. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? Do you do it, but then you don't repeat it the next time, or mm -hmm. what do you? How do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. So I want to be a nice person. <laughs> so once I said yes, I'll do it. Yeah. But I, I, I try to be very careful with what I say when I say yes. So uh, I, uh, I have a great team. Uh, so they will just check. You. Yeah, yeah. They'll check <laughs> even because I'm, I'm, I want to be nice to everybody. So I'm likely to say yes too, too many times. So my secretary and my team says, Ken, are you sure about this? Yeah, yeah probably not. So can you come up with something? That <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here and you didn't reschedule this interview. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but in general, I'm trying to listen to my heart. That's and good. that let me hear. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people don't un understand the power of a daily affirmation or mm -hmm. a daily check-in with yourself, just mm -hmm. like you talked about for two minutes. For someone that doesn't believe in affirmations, what would you say to them? So if you, even if you don't believe it, you must be saying something to yourself. Like, this is a terrible day. It's so hot. I don't like this. You know, so uh, subconsciously, you're saying something about your life or about yourself, about your friends or about your clients. Oh, I, I hate working with this person. You know, something like that. So I think it's a, a affirmation by itself. So um, just to write down what are the things that you say to yourself. Uh, subconsciously, mm -hmm. you can probably figure out. Right. And is that a happy thought? <laughs> and then, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the uh, things that we talk to ourselves are negative. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so do you want to feel negative thoughts like this? Or do you want to uh, pour more positive thoughts? Mm -hmm. You have a choice. But unless you sh uh, write them down, uh, you, you never know it. And then... Uh, you may find that uh, the reason why you get you get depressed because I'm I keep all these negative me, thoughts yes, yeah, yeah. about about life. Well, no wonder you, I feel depressed. So sure. if all the things you talked about to you, about, about you are positive and loving, um, it's it's what you get. Yeah, exactly. And can you tell me how we can think about money as energy? Mm -hmm. In the book, also I saw you writing about how money is energy, and sometimes. People try to make it and hold on to it. Mm -hmm. They want to hold on to it. They want to stack it in their bank as high as they can go. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to spend it. Sometimes it happens. What happens when we hoard money, when we keep it, and we don't let it come and go mm -hmm. as energy? What happens? So I have seen so many interesting things. Like when you, uh, if you hoard your money, uh, a few things happen. You get sick, and really? then you have to pay for the medical bills. Really? Yeah. Or like your kids do something bad, and then you have to pay for the damage. So uh, money needs outlet. So uh, it's so interesting how money flows. And if you don't let uh, let out uh, your your um, money uh, energies outlet, it's gonna uh, it's gonna get bad. It's like a, a pond. Mm -hmm. If there's no uh, fl uh, flow. Uh, the water gets bad. Right. It's like, think about your health. If you eat, 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 and don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're sick. What's, what's going to happen? Yeah. So for to stay healthy, you have to eat right. You have to release right. Yes. So uh, for, for hoarding uh, money, I want to ask them, uh, you're eating so much, but what if you refuse? I'm, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not going to go to the bathroom, you know. For the rest of my life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You'd be sick. Yeah, right. and you explode. Cannot, and you cannot eat well. Yeah. So you have to let your money flow. And then the next flow comes in. So here comes uh, money EQ, uh, the trust part. Trust is the hardest part of money EQ. You have to have the trust that once you let go of money, it comes back. 
So you don't have the trust. That's why you start worrying. That's why you have doubts about yourself. So instead of um, uh, uh, attaching uh, to your money, you can say, thank you for staying with me. Just go bless the world and come back with your friends as mm. soon as possible. Come back. <laughs> thank you for being here. Go bless the world. Come back as quickly as possible <laughs> with more friends. Right. So it's kind of fun, right? Sure. So it's a metaphor. So in your, in your mind, letting go, if you let go fast, it's going to come back fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to let go of money. Really? Yes. So, you know, how should people be thinking about this so they have enough safety and security? They have enough in the bank for if something goes bad in the economy. Mm -hmm. They've saved enough. Mm -hmm. But also, they're not just overspending as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people who have the personality where they just spend, 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 yes. uh -huh. then they go into debt. Right. right? So how do we balance yes. money mm -hmm. so that we have enough mm -hmm. for you know the future yeah and we're not in debt mm -hmm. so that's ooh, i'm so fascinated with a couple counseling and sometimes family counseling you know we're trying to have balance uh, -huh. uh that's what's so beautiful about human humankind you know uh somehow the spender get ma gets married with money maker. Right. <laughs> right. Someone's making all the money and someone loves to spend it all. Right. And so they come in and uh, uh, this person is spending so much money. No, no, you're making too much money. You know, so it, it, you have no time for me. That's why I'm trying to get the stress out mm. by spending money. Wow. So you have to have the balance. That's where Zen comes in. Interesting. Uh, if you're spending too much, you have to start saving. If you're saving too much, you have to start spending. So the prescription I give to each uh, client is different. Mm. For some people, uh, the savers, I said, withdraw $1,000 and spend it for nothing in 24 hours. They probably freak out like, ah. <laughs> no, they are okay to the withdrawing part. And so the next <laughs> a few days, a week later, they came back and said, can I withdrew a, 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 a thousand dollars? I didn't spend it. But I spent like twenty dollars. <laughs> oh man! Because they cannot uh, waste their money. It, it's against their constitution. I know people like that. So what what should people be spending their money on? Right. So they don't feel like I'm just blowing money and, and wasting it. I know. It. So uh, like a money maker, <laughs> money makers, they think. Is this a good investment? Yes, yes. <laughs> so don't think about it because just enjoy the money flow. You can give it to people. You can just, you can throw it away on the floor it's because somebody's going to pick it up and make somebody very happy. Mm -hmm. So you can be creative with money. But we are taught from a young child that, uh, childhood, that you have to take care of money well. Just, just what if, uh, what if you just throw your hundred dollar bills on the uh, on the street what would your mother say <laughs> right right so but f uh, for exercises i tell people can you throw away your money and and, and it's, they 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 show me the expression as if i'm saying i'm gonna you're gonna die in 10 minutes like wow they've been like oh, you know so i enjoy what, so much what, <laughs> what happens with your clients when you say okay go spend a few hundred dollars a day or leave money out on the table for mm -hmm. someone to pick it up mm -hmm. and you do these experiments. Mm -hmm. What do these individuals say afterwards, a month later, a year later about giving their money or spending it, not all of it, but some mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. in these experiments? So they realize how much attachment they had toward money and it's in here. And by the way, I, my finding shows that uh, the saver type, the people who have attachment uh, for money tend to have this uh, problem physically. Mm. They get uh, uh, con constipation. Constipated, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there is that. So they have a hard time letting go of money. And their waste, <laughs> yes. their, stuff, their food. Because they're attached to it. What happens when we are attached to money? I think uh, the flow of energy gets stopped. So if you let go of money easily, the more opportunities come uh, easily, but because you let, you cannot let go of money, you cannot receive. Mm. So uh, if you let go easily, uh, the more to come. So those people are uh, losing out opportunities. So in, say, say um, I had a friend in my 20s uh, when I asked him to, to go out and, and have, us, have some fun. 
And the, he said, no, 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 I don't want to do that because it's going to cost something. <laughs> Say, you know, $50 sure, or $100 sure, sure. for a party, right? But just look at what he's missing. He's missing out the opportunity of meeting new people. Yeah. Like I met many great mentors by attending very expensive seminars. You know, I attended uh, like $200 seminar. At the time, it felt like a million dollars. Yes. But uh, since I was the only student at the time to attend a, a business seminar, everybody loved me. So $200. Oh, it's so cool that you're here with all these older people and you decided to show up. Let's right. mentor you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like a, a you know, little toy. Sure. Like, okay. <laughs> you know, I want to just play with you. So, um, so that was a great, great investment for, for example. So if you let go of money easily, you get so much. Uh, so, um, why don't you think of, uh, letting go of money and also as a, uh, almost like a shopping for your memories. Shopping for memories. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have to fly. I'm, I'm going around the world this time. I'm just meeting up a lot of people. It costs some money, right? But with the, uh, with, by spending so much money on hotels and airplane, look what I'm having. I'm, such, uh, uh, I'm having such a great time. Yes. And, uh, and you have experiences, life memories. Yeah. So when I'm in a senior home, uh, some sometime in the future, yeah. I think of having you know this conversation with you yeah. and meeting up a lot of great people in the world. So I mm. I, I have full of memories. Mm. So um, if you just have, if you don't spend the money, you don't get all the fun memories. Right. And what happens to people when they speak bad about money? They complain about it. They mm -hmm live in scarcity <laughs> what happens yes that's a good question so think of uh, money as a person uh, i always ask um, oh. you know I, I talk to thousands of people all the time and just ask, ask a big audience uh how many of you love money you know if it's a business seminar they say yes and then my next question is how many people do you think money loves you as much and then say hmm. Hmm, i love money but i don't know if i'm <laughs> being loved by money but the uh, uh, feelings uh, must be mutual, right? It's the same thing with your uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Even if you love her, love him so much, if you don't get the same amount of love from from the other part, it doesn't mean anything. So you have to you have to love your money, and your money has to love you. But right. if you speak bad about money, what would you or think? You, or you speak bad about people who have money? Yes. Then why would money love you in return? Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly. Thank you for answering me. <laughs> yeah. So that's exact, uh, it, like, exactly uh, what, what, what I want to say. Mm -hmm. If you want to be in love with money, you have to be, you know, you have to respect your money as your best friend or your love of your life. So love uh, on money can love you back. So what are the best ways that we can start respecting our money better so that our money loves us more and wants to bring more friends? I always ask my money where it wants to go. Really? Yeah. So what do you mean? You have like a uh, few hundred dollars in your hand and you say, where do you want to go? Yeah, the other day I got a big, uh, check. Uh, a big check from overseas. That the book I wrote uh, 18 years ago, it's about $10,000. And right. then, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, money. And I asked money, uh, do you want to stay with me or do you want to go somewhere? And the money said, I, might, I hear it in, in imagination, uh, the money says, I want to go to Cambodia. <laughs> to help kids. Wow. And then I remember there is a, a friend of mine who is doing an orphanage in Cambodia. So that $10,000 is helping um, uh, kids for uh, fruits and electricity and the rent for a whole year, like 36 kids. So and that $10,000 I could have used for something else, but I have already enough. So um, by asking the money where it wants to go, it went to the right place wow. to bless the kids. So, I'm so blessed with uh, happy money. So, if I start doing that, the more money comes in. So, more money comes in from, from the world, and I've written 200 books, so like uh, book royalties come from mm -hmm. everywhere. So, almost like every few other days, I get money from somewhere. It's amazing. Yeah, so I ask money, where do you want to go? And then I want uh, to take your family out for dinner. That's good, so we just, you know, go. So, it's not, I'm not, I'm not saying that I, uh, you should spend your money for somebody else. It could be, you know, I, I want to buy a car or whatever that is. So, mm -hmm. so if you can be, if you can have some distance from money, instead of like, this is all my money, 
uh, you, you can be free from money. Because what happens to someone who has so much extra money mm -hmm. at the end of their life and they don't spend it? What do you think about that? Because a lot of people have a lot of extra, but then they pass it down to their families yeah. or they put it in trusts and then they give it out to charities. What's your thoughts on that? I'm just saying that uh, they're missing out a huge thing. You know, uh, they could have seen what your money could have done. The impact. Yeah, my, my mentor, one of my mentors is uh, uh, Junki Yoshida, who is a founder of uh, Yoshida Gourmet Sauce in Portland, Oregon. And he donated uh, something like or eight or $10 million uh, dollar worth of uh, uh, state wow. to children's hospital. Wow. Uh, uh, and he's in, in his uh, 60s, so, uh, or early 70s, so he, uh, he's still alive, right? He experiences it. Right. I mean, usually I hear when you pass, out, pass away, that goes to something, right? It's, but he donated the big, big house that uh, their old, all their kids grew up on, donated the, the huge mansion to the hospital. And I asked him, uh, if I were you, I'd want to live as long as I, you know, um, I, I'm alive. And then when I die or my, my wife dies together, that can go. And uh, he said, I wanted to see how my, how my money or how my, how my house is helping kids while I'm alive. Mm. Don't you think it's selfish? Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I think you have all the rights to see how your happy money can help others. Right. So if you just uh, hoard your money and then die without doing anything, you are missing out the most fun because you have such an impact. Uh, you could have an impact for other people. Yes. And I think that's a reward for making so much money. Right. What should we be thinking about instead of like, I want to make a million dollars? Should we be reframing that in a different way? First of all, you really have to figure out what you want in your life. Do you want no. to do you want, do you want to make it? Uh, do you want to be a success socially? But you could become you could end up being a loser personally. <laughs> so mm -hmm. do you want to be a, a happy person, or do you want to be a wealthy person? Uh, you can take both, but uh, the way to happy and wealthy people only has an opening uh, who aim for happiness first. Mm, I love this because most people think once I'm there, then I'll be happy, then I'll respect myself, then I'll get the attention I want. But what I'm hearing you say is the only way to happy and wealthy is through happiness first. Yes. And then if you're lucky or if it's your destiny, I would say, you may be rewarded with money. But, you know, there are many lives that um, necessarily money will follow but you can still uh, enjoy life and stay very happy. Because if you go after money, you, you could, uh, you're likely to lose everything, your peace of mind. And those people who, who put money first, uh, you, you, your clients love that. You know, just uh, um, think about two florists. By the way, I always carry uh, uh, flowers like this, you know, um, in front of me. So uh, there are, Two florists, for example, um, just nearby your house. One florist, always think of the cost. Instead of 10 roses, I should, uh, I should give nine roses, you know. And instead of good roses, maybe smaller ones, so they can cut costs, right? Mm -hmm. The other florist, always just bring in the best flowers and always take good care of it so that it will last on, on their houses. Where would you go? You know, so if you yeah. are good at math and good at business uh, uh, in the short term, they will lose long term. So mm. people who love flowers and then uh, he or she can talk about the roses for hours. Those people really care that um, you, you just they, they care about the roses uh, on uh, in your house. You know, they're just praying their kids yes. will stay longer so, you know, people can enjoy. And, you know, yeah. they're not, uh, they might think about the cost, but the love of the flowers is bigger, you know, than the business. But those people are the ones that I think all the clients would, would go to. So eventually, they will succeed. Yeah, I love that. Do you think it's possible then, because I heard you mention that, 
you know, some may not be your destiny. Do you think it's possible for anyone to achieve financial freedom if that's what they're looking for? And, and stay happy. Yes. Uh, theoretically, yes. But some people are not uh, interested in money that much. I think you and I have this quest for truth, you know, quest for uh, hunger service. for uh, uh, service. So those people uh, could become financially success. But if you don't have the motivation, and if you just... Uh, kind of person who just enjoys uh, enjoys looking at the flowers all day without anything. I mean, those people uh, may not achieve financial independence. But uh, when I grab him, are you okay without uh, uh, achieving financial success? And he would say, oh, it's okay as long as I, I can take, uh, you know, um, this time to look at roses all day. So right. it's, I think it's um, his or her business if he or she wants to achieve financial independence. Because uh, think about it this way. Uh, even if you don't achieve financial independence, if you have 20 wealthy friends who g take good care of you because they love you, uh, do you think he or she needs to have a million dollars in your bank account? No. So uh, if you become a lovable person and uh, receives a certain respect, I think you're okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you don't you don't have to uh, achieve financial independence, but you need to uh, really figure out what's most important for you right now. Otherwise, all your life is filled with preparation for uh, financial success and business success. But your most precious time is in your 20s and 30s and 40s. Oh, by the way, uh, my uh, national bestsellers uh, series is uh, 17 things to do in your teens and 20s and 30s. I sold about uh, more than 2 million copies. So I wow. interviewed people in their 20s, people in their 30s and 40s and 50s. And the, the common question I ask all, of all their generations what, what do you regret most that you didn't in your 40s? And what, mm. what, what are the thing, three things that you regret most that you didn't do in your 60s? You know, I grab uh, people in their six, 70s and 80s. You know, uh, looking back, uh, so I'm in my 50s. So like I grab people in their six, 60s and 70s. What would you yeah. regret in, in your 50s? And, uh, you know, people often talk about especially successful, uh, my older successful friends in the 70s, 80s, they have like a few public companies. And they, uh, they say, I spent too much time and energy on business. Wow. Yeah, I didn't have to build this empire. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay personally to have uh, only 5% or 10% of the success I made. But I wish I was at the soccer game for my boys. You know, I wish mm. I spent more uh, dinner, uh, date dinner with my wife. I wish I spent more time on concert hall, but I just missed those uh, because of my business meetings. And I was, I think I was very addicted to making money. And I regret that I, that I didn't spend much time uh, traveling and chatting with friends, you know, talking nonsense, just laugh and over beer, uh, I, I wish I, I could waste, go back and waste all my time. <laughs> wow. Why do you think that there are so many people in the world that have this idea they want to build an empire, but then later, I'm hearing you say, a, a majority of people are saying, and maybe there are some people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s that are like holding on to, they're really proud of the empire they've built, and they don't regret anything. Maybe there's some people out there, but I'm hearing you say a lot of people wish they would take less of their empire for more time with people they cared about. Why is it so, why is it this thing that we think about building an empire? I think it's uh, um, embedded in a human gene, I guess, you know, the Genghis Khan uh, of uh, 14th century. 95% uh, of the time he was in a battle. Uh, he ended up, he, uh, he built one of the biggest empires of the human history but he ended up 
uh, uh, he ended up dying in his uh, temporary uh, tent in the war. Mm -hmm. So all the business tycoons could end up dying in a hotel room where they were going to sign the biggest contract ever. So uh, once again, uh, what do you want to do in your life? You know, what do you um, respect or cherish most? And if you don't uh, respect that now, you cannot respect that in 10 years. And your precious life is only, I would say, uh, from 25 to 55. And if you are 65, you can have a good time. But still, I think a lot of events happen from age 25 to 55. And if you keep, I mean, that's a working hours too, <laughs> so years. So if you just focus on um, life, uh, mostly on business, uh, you lose most of your fun time. So um, if you're um, too business oriented, you really have to uh, change the priorities of life. Otherwise, you're going to re regret in 20 years. Yeah. I'm a big believer that you mentioned charity work, that it maybe if people are focused on uh, charity where they're not focused on the money as much, then they may not build as much wealth for themselves. Uh, uh, let me know what you think about this thought. I'm a big believer that the amount of money we make is directly related to the amount of value we bring to others or to the marketplace or to the world. And our, abil and our ability to position and package that value in order to receive money. Would you, would you agree or add or, or take anything from that? I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. So, but that's only uh, as long as you calculate into financial value. Yeah. You know, there are certain things, like say a kindergarten uh, teacher who mm -hmm. spends, uh, he or he, yep. she spends all her passion, all his passion into uh, kids in front of him or her. And he or she is adding great value, but only, only for five kids. And they they just love it. So uh, I don't want to uh, talk to these guys. Okay, you can leverage this. <laughs> you can package your your knowledge and just outsource it or start selling in you know, a mass scale. I wouldn't yeah. do that because they are truly enjoying their quality time. Absolutely. So, uh, a certain thing uh, is not measured by uh, financial numbers and or. Absolutely. Or, or, or elderly uh, homes, you know, if I, I know a lot of people who work there, it's hard working time, you know, they, they stay up all night, or like nurses, you know, they're just doing so much. But that doesn't mean necessarily mean that she gets $2 million a year. So this financial system is mm -hmm. uh, went too extreme. That's why um, I think there could be a, a big shift happening in the past, in the next few years. So right. it'll be uh, more fair to all the people. What happens when we compare ourselves to people on social media who seem to have all this wealth or financial abundance or to our friends or peers or people at work who are maybe making more or less than us? What happens to us personally when we compare, when we compare our, our financial situation with others? So I uh, jokingly advise people, if you want to be happy, stay away from uh, Facebook <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's likely to make you feel miserable <laughs> yeah. if you're not ready. Uh, if, you, if you don't have uh, you know, a good mentality, Facebook is a killer for your happiness because there's always somebody out there somehow who is eating a, at the better restaurant, who is dating a, a, a better looking person, you know, both guys and, and women, mm -hmm. and also who is uh, buying a, a bigger house, a nicer house than we live in, nicer clothes, you know, so uh, and they're having a better vacation somewhere outside, exotic. So they're always somebody better, somebody uh, who is, is worth more. But if you start comparing uh, your friends and others with you, that is a, a shortcut. Uh, to unhappiness. So if you, if you use Facebook to congratulate your friends and figure out what's possible for you, I think Facebook is a gem, you know, because you can see uh, uh, people's houses. I want that. 
Congrat congratulations for you. Oh, I'm so happy that you find him. You know, if your mentality is like that, I think Facebook is a great place to be. But if、yeah. you just feel jealous or competitive, I think it's an, such an exhausting place. For everyone listening and watching right now, what would be the next three steps they should take after listening or watching、mm -hmm. to this、mm -hmm. around their invisible assets, their visible assets, or just the next three steps they、mm. should take in life? To prepare for this, right. So mentally, you have to be ready to find your peace of mind. So you can start counting your blessings, start appreciating what you have, and、uh, enjoy the flow of happy money. So when money comes in, you can say thank you for the money given to me. When you pay for the bills, thank you. I have enough abundance so I can pay the bills, and start blessing people that you're giving money to. So by doing that. You can find your、uh, peace of mind. Yes. And whatever you do, and I think that's that's the basic. That's number one. That's the、okay. base. And also, secondly, you have to start、uh, figuring out your inventory, what you have, and who you are. What type of inventory?、Uh, both emotional and also、uh, your gift. I never knew I could write until I was thirty-three. Really. My、uh, parents were so surprised, and my brother and sister. And many of my uh, uh, friends were so surprised that I became an author, and I was the, <laughs> the one who gets surprised most, by the way. Yeah. So I didn't know until I started writing. So I'm sure they have you have some kind of gifts buried in you. For example, Louis, you are、uh, an athlete, so definitely you knew, you knew、uh, your gift as an athlete, but probably you didn't know、um, that you had a gift as an interviewer. No, I had no idea. Speaker. Yeah. Writer,、uh, I know it. Right, writer, right,、yeah. and also、uh, somebody who can motivate people. Right, you know, you use it、uh, for you、mm -hmm. to motivate yourself, but you didn't know you can impact millions of people. I had no idea. Right, so like when you are young,、uh, in your thirties and forties, you never knew,、mm -hmm. and so you have to start looking at sure what you have, what skills, tools that you have developed that、right. you could use if you need right. to. Right,、yeah. and you have to multiply them、mm -hmm. uh, because、uh, only single gift. It's not taking you far, but if you can multiply your gifts of、uh, speaking, for example, and also listening, and the sense of humor, and the care, generosity, if you combine all of them, you become so unique. Yes. So once you become so unique, people <laughs> start just coming to you because you're more attractive. Right. Yeah. So okay.、Uh, okay. So that's number two: is find、mm -hmm. out your inventory of your assets and your gifts. And I'm also assuming your inventory of like. How much money you have, your investments,、yeah. your, what you. But it's not so important. Okay. Because if you are not making much, it's right, not right. Right. Yeah, right. Right. What skills do you have? Yeah.、The、skills. Yeah. Right. So if you、uh, a net asset is、uh, less than three hundred thousand dollars, don't worry about investing. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. I think you should invest in yourself. Invest in you. And and take your friends out for dinner. Because it's going to pay more dividend.、Mm -hmm. So、um, be generous with your energy, your time, yes, your gifts. Yes.、Uh, and then the third step. Would be start getting support from everybody. Everybody, you know, I have say, for example, more than ten thousand、uh, people、um, sending me money every month as a, a form of subscri subs、uh, mm -hmm. subscription online salon. Yes. So and、uh, I, I haven't promised anything to do for them. So it's just a love money. So can you know? Which is what type of money? Love money. Love money. Yeah. So ten thousand people. Yeah. Pay you money every month. Yes. Just because they love you. Yeah. Ten、um, dollars. That's how I feel. <laughs> wow. Are you、yeah. are you offering them any? Are you giving them any? I, I just say、uh, I I had this fun interview with Louis today and I'm in Stockholm. I sent、sure. some videos, but I'm、wow. not promising like I do this. You know, so I give you this. So get me, give me this. Right. Right. No, it's more of a casual thing. That's cool. So I、uh, um so I have enough trust from people. So the happy money. So almost like、um, uh, is given in my custody, so I can help other people. That's cool. So、uh, if you start getting、uh, fun clubs or、uh, cheerleader, cheer supporters, so you can start with five people, and you can、uh, start having ten people, thirty people. So the next economy will be very interesting because、mm. uh, a lot of people support one another. So instead of working for one big company. Say I have three hundred people supporting me.、Right. Say,、uh, and you can、uh, increase your monthly uh, support uh, money. Say a、uh, hundred dollars per month. You know, if I get a support from 
30 people $100 a month, that's $3,000. Right. And if you get 50 people uh, who are supporting you with $100, you already have a $5,000 income. So whatever you do, uh, you don't have to be the next entrepreneur of the world. You can satisfy, or you, at least you can have deep connection with 50 people or 100 people who love you so much mm. and who's not going to let you down when you fall. Yes. So if you have that strong trust uh, from people, uh, you don't have to worry about money for the rest of your life. Wow. Why should we also say thank you when we're sending out money uh, to others? Because uh, if you get a if you get a bill, that means you somebody did something for you. For example, if it's an electricity bill, you know because of uh, the electricity company, um, I can use the internet. I can use the lighting and microphone and computer. And it's not only one man job. Uh, there is this uh, service person. There is this uh, people who are at the power plants. Uh, and also there is somebody who just brought uh, oil to Japan from Middle East. And, and there are, I don't know, thousands of people uh, working for the electricity. And they make sure that it's, uh, in my house, installed properly. So there are mm. millions of uh, um, uh, reasons to appreciate the electricity. And if it's, uh, say, if it's, a, uh, if it's $300 or $500 or uh, maybe short, uh, smaller or bigger, wow, you know, if I'm asked to uh, install somebody's house with that electricity, I, I cannot do that with this money. So thank you for just giving me the electricity. Th thank you for giving me water. Thank you mm -hmm. for uh, serving me good meal at the restaurant. Thank you for giving me a ride like Uber. So you can thank the person who gave you the service and product. So the, the reason you, you have to pay, you're getting something in, in exchange. And usually takes more than one or two or could be a hundred people's work. And then yeah. uh, you ask the money, thank them too. So that means that the money you give to the electricity company will be paid to all the people. Wow. So like I can, it's like a magic wand. Even if it's a hundred dollars, this magic wand can, uh, will start saying, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. And so, you know, it'll just uh, thank, it's, it's like a domino effect, effect of uh, thank you. So it's not yeah. just thanking your money, thanking the people who are connected with me. So uh, we are all living on this planet together. So if we have this feeling, everybody's feeling this way, we all connected. We all connected with our people in the Middle East. We all connected with the people in Russia, Africa, China, US. Uh, like it or not, we all connected. So do we hate each other or do we appreciate one another? So if we start doing more, there will be uh, no exploitation of any kind. That's the economy I want to see in the coming years. Yeah. It's such a uh, simple philosophy and practice that I think if we can all start to do it a little more with money and with everything, the people that we see, our friends, thanking them when they're coming, thanking them when they're leaving for their time, their attention. My girlfriend does this with our meals. Every time we eat together, she's really thank she puts a lot of time and attention thanking the people that just made this the people that delivered the food to the restaurant, the people who harvested the food, you know, and all the people. And it's not something I did until about a year ago with food. And it's something that I've, sh I've noticed my digestive system relaxing, like me just taking in the moment and, and feeling a better sense of joy and happiness while eating food, as opposed to just eating protein bars to get to the next thing. Um, but really appreciating it. And I think when we appreciate things, when, which I'm hearing you say, when you appreciate money, when it comes, when it goes, when you appreciate food, when you appreciate your home, your family, your friends, those things will appreciate in value and they'll want to come to you more. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, exactly. And, and uh, Luis, you know what I've, what I've been talking about and you've been practicing it without knowing maybe, but uh, I think you've been doing it as a natural person. You know, there are a certain thing like a natural business person, natural artist. So you're one of the natural people who, who just uh, appreciate things. You know, that's I why do, you're yeah. successful and people love you. 
And uh, so if you want to be like, uh, if, 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 if the viewers like, uh, want to be like Lewis, you have to learn what he's doing, you know. So it's not just uh, uh, small habits, but I think the attitude of, mm. uh, toward life. And somehow uh, there are the only two kinds, you know, one, one kind is uh, people who keep appreciating, the other one keep um, complaining about it. So if you just, uh, you know, it, it could be something very small, but after 20 years, your life will be very different. So I hope mm. everybody will appreciate one another a little bit, a little bit more from yesterday. And what happens if we start complaining about money more, whether it be just kind of frustrated little comments here and there, you know, what happens to, to money in our life when we complain about it, as opposed to appreciate it and, and thank it? So uh, if you start complaining about money, uh, like 95% of us, <laughs> mm -hmm. money just to, uh, look at from a money's perspective you know if you've been complaining about it oh i don't want to go to him anymore <laughs> and then <laughs> and, and it's like a mutual feeling is feeling is mutual okay you, you can complain about it. okay fine i'm not going to come to you <laughs> so uh and i think subconsciously if you are complaining about money you don't want it to be near you so my favorite question to people is if money was a person, who would it be? That means mm. uh, if money was a person, would it be a fun person, always joking, always making, uh, entertaining you, or is somebody like a, a assassin, you know, who's who's going to try to hurt you or scare you, or gangsters who try to you know uh, uh, intimidate you? So uh, if you're complaining, money may not be a, such a fun, good person. So I, I think by complaining, you become, uh, you make money a villain. And you don't want the scary person to live in your house. So uh, for happy, wealthy people, money is their best friend. They're so happy to welcome them at home. You know, when you open the door, I find you, Louis. Louis, thanks. Just come on here. Just, you know, grab a beer. Just you treat your best friend like that. But if you complain about that, and if uh, you find that uh, person in front of you, doorstep, money comes here. No, no, no. I don't need. I don't need you here. Get out of here. So that person cannot invite money in. Sure, sure. What would you, you said? You've been financially, you know, uh, free or stable your entire life. You haven't had like a, an issue with it personally. You never had to really face that. Let's put a hypothetical scenario out there, and I'm sure people have asked you this before. But if for whatever reason you you didn't have any money, it was gone. You know, you didn't have your businesses, you didn't have any money, you didn't have any savings. For whatever reason, in this hypothetical world, it was gone. And what would be your next three moves in order to just get back to a a stable financial place for yourself? I just ask my friends, "Hi, hi, this can is I, Ken. can I have some money? <laughs> <laughs> I lost everything. Can you wire me money?" You know, I, I don't need to borrow. I just want my friends to give it to me. So uh, you don't have to, you know, just uh, uh, feel burdened. But what, how much is fun for you? Just a wire to me. My account is this. And then I just pray. <laughs> <laughs> so you would ask them just for, for money without actually having to pay it back is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Can you send me happy money, please? <laughs> and then... I'll probably do the same thing with my uh, readers and, and viewers. Uh, I wow. have, a, you know, I've sold 8 million uh, books and my uh, podcast has uh, 50 million downloads. And uh, I personally have heard so many fun, great stories how they achieve financial independence. So this is a time, okay, my friends, you know, you can pay me back now. <laughs> I'm in need. Sure. So if they feel like uh, sending me a, a dollar or two dollars, any dollars will be fine. You know, I will do wow. a thank you, thank you live, you know, in two months. So <laughs> please start wiring money now. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> See how it goes. Okay, that's step one. What would, be the, what would be the next thing you would do? I like the approach. Just sometimes, sometimes just asking for what we want is what we need to start with. Just saying, hey, can someone, can you give me $500? Can you give me $10,000? Can you give me this? Are you open to it? People... Maybe a lot of people say no, uh, and, and that's okay as well. But just asking for what you want 
yeah. is, is a good first step. Okay, what else would you do? So, uh, by the way, I wouldn't do something like crowdfunding. Like if you just, you know, uh, pay me $100, I'll do yeah. this. I, that's a give and take. So what I would say is like, hi, guys, please wire me some money. That's for one thing, right? The other thing is like, I'll ask my friends uh, who has uh, um, uh, extra uh, guest room or ex extra house. And I, I'll ask them if I could uh, use your extra room or extra house. And then um, I'll ask them how, how long and can I use your chauffeur and the housemates <laughs> there and then, <laughs> and can I buy the foods, you know, on your account? <laughs> and so I'll just make sure. And then I'll just stay there uh, and or stay with my friends. And uh, I'll just ask my friends, what do you think I should do? Mm. And then they'll give me advice and I'll just um, I'll do that myself. Uh, I'll, I'll do that uh, tour for questionnaire tour. What mm -hmm. should Ken do for the rest of his life tour? So <laughs> I can even make it open to public. Uh, if you let Ken, uh, Ken stay overnight and just tell him what he should do, uh, you have to give him food and shelter. <laughs> Anybody's welcome. Here's the <laughs> link. <laughs> so I was, I'm, I'm kind of curious how many people will just sign up for that. So I'll mm. stay over there, there for a night and then I just listen, you know, I, um, without any advice. If they want advice, I'm happy to give one. But my, I, I only need only one bed, one night and also nice food. And I don't drink uh, alcohol. So just uh, orange juice or just water will be fine. And if, if they want me to um, say something, I'm happy to talk. So let's see. So I have many creative ideas. Uh, that people want me to do. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm not afraid of money or I'm not losing everything is that um, even if I lose everything, my friends will never let me down. Uh, mm. And then um, I, at least I, I can count on 20 or 30 friends who would probably give me uh, an extra million dollars you know, for me to get going because wow. they're pretty wealthy. And I'm, and I'm part of a, a wealth building uh, history for them. Right. You've helped them. You've helped them make a lot more money over time. So they'd be happy to give you some money. Gotcha. I'm not going to send them bills, <laughs> but I'm sure my friends would uh, be generous enough to uh, give me something. So I'm not worried about that because I've done so much to support people, even strangers. Um, so um, uh, this would be a fun challenge for me. It's a perfect uh, surrender. So mm. um, I might do that in my 60s. Or there something. you go. Yeah, just just lose all your money. <laughs> yeah. So my inspiration is actually an American person, Buck Minister Fuller, uh, you know, who's a great uh, person. And uh, what he did uh, in his, uh, uh, his ending days was he donated all the money he had on the eve of the year. So he started, he started with zero. Every year? Yes, that's what I heard. Wow. So every year he donated, he, he gave away all the money he made and then start his next year with zero. And, and I'm very en enticed into his lifestyle. I cannot do that now yet, but I may be able to do that uh, in my 70s and 80s. So how can people in America, North America, and around the world, be satisfied and grateful for where they are mm -hmm. and still strive for more. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, more of a uh, find 100% fulfillment with where you are. And then if it's your path, it's going to grow. Mm. If it's not your path, you don't have to make it grow. But uh, there's almost like a religion here in North America. Uh, bigger is better. The more is better. Super size, yeah, everything. <laughs> right. But think, uh, just wait a second and just uh, think about it. Do you want a super big house if you're only two of you? If you have like seven kids, you need a bigger house. But if it's only two of you, maybe it's time to downsize. And, and, and because uh, so that way uh, your lifestyle will be uh, more humble. So you really have to know when to sort of like grow and also when to end your life. So you have to start um, facing, uh, say you're in your 50s or 60s, uh, you have 10 years to prepare, 
uh, according, uh, approaching to death. But a lot of people in the 60s and 70s, they tr want to act forever they're 21. Right, right. <laughs> so, but you're, you're going to die. So you have to prepare for the end of your life. Mm -hmm. To do that, you really have to um, say, uh, because uh, your life goes up and down, right? You cannot climb, keep climbing up the mountains. So uh, at some point, you have to start uh, descending. So in, in financial terms, uh, you have to start spending what you have accumulated. Don't just keep it in the bank. Yeah, so I, I, one of the books in North America I love is Die With Zero. Mm -hmm. The concept is, can yes. you die with zero at the end of your life, which is very hard. A friend of mine uh, whose mother died with only $7 in her bank account. Really? I think it's a master of money because she calculated how much it's going to cost for her funeral. Wow. So she just withdrew all the money and she gave all the money to her grandkids, which is like a few hundred dollars. No, she's, she's not a wealthy person. And she died with uh, <coughs> only seven dollars, so it's almost like, almost like she landed so beautifully. Wow, that's beautiful. Why do you think people are so greedy to want to make more money, and they have this greed inside of them to have to accumulate to attract more? Why do you think that is? And what's the difference between wanting to make more money for a good reason uh -huh. and wanting to make more money because <laughs> of greed? Right. Louis, you keep asking me so many great <laughs> questions. I'm so enjoying the interviews. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to appreciate that. Thank you. So um, there are many ways to react to financial situation. I have um, taught about money EQ. Mm -hmm. So um, when we're, uh, I realized this when I was at the uh, um, conference table to file um, inheritance taxes for wealthy men. And uh, here there are three, three uh, people, their kids right, a wife and three kids. And they were born and brought up in the same household, but the, the eldest son looks like a Wall Street type, you know, nice wear suit and short haircut. And the second daughter looks very uh, humble. And the third one looks like hippie. And I, sure. Is, aren't they re <laughs> related? <laughs> and then I realized that to financial situation, if you're worried, um, you might end up becoming a, a money maker. You know, if you're addicted. worried. If you're worried. If the responsibility is on you. Right. So you're the older. By yeah. making more money, you try to fix the worry. Mm. And, uh, and if you worry, you may want to become a spender because you feel powerful when you spend the money. So if you worry, you want to be a saver. By saving, you can feel the security. Yes. And so uh, uh, there will be a warrior. You know, you, you do nothing, but you keep worrying. Yes. So. To a uh, financial situation, there can be many different ways and uh, different personalities are born. So I'm fascinated with the subject because uh, you never knew that you were a spender, you were a, a money maker. And uh, your question comes toward um, money maker type. Yes. And, uh, and the happy money maker type knows that th they can contribute more, so they're in the flow of happy money. And uh, a money greed, uh, money maker type, they end up losing a lot of money. They do. Yeah, because they try to uh, uh, increase and multiply their money, which means they take more risks. So they are likely to get into uh, scams. And I've seen so many quick clients. Quick money, quick money. Yes, uh, get uh, scammed by uh, um, people who try to get the money. Yes. So that's, that's life. Sure, yeah. What do you think is the... You know, there's so much happening with the in talks, specifically in America, with interest rates going up in America, mm -hmm. inflation going up to over eight and a half percent recently. I think, you know, the housing market uh, and just the uncertainty of the economic situation mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. What do you think people should be investing in? What types of assets for the next, you know, few years with all of the uncertainty? What would be a great investment that's mm -hmm. not a try to get rich quick mm -hmm. investment, but something that would deliver good returns, mm -hmm. hopefully over time? Right. So I taught this course online and like 8,000 people um, watched me uh, wow. teach this online. So uh, I taught about uh, financial independence and visual assets and invisible, invisible assets. Mm -hmm. I see there is going to be a big change 
it could come as a crash of Wall Street. But uh, it's uh, more. Uh, I think I see a bigger thing is is going to come. Like what? Like uh, the the collapse of financial system. Really? Because uh, we've uh, printed so much money, and then it's going crazy. It's out of, out of control. So、um, we never know what's going to happen. Nobody can predict. So、uh, even if you、uh, invest in、uh, uh, bitcoins and cryptocurrency, it shut up and then down. And、uh, gold and silver is、uh, real gold coins and silver coins for not super wealthy people. I recommend that. But you know, in 1930s,、uh, U.S. government prohibited from owning a gold.、Uh, really? So、Why? you have to、uh, because uh, it, uh, to protect、um, uh, dollars.、Mm. So if that kind of thing happens,、uh, even though、uh, investment in gold is good, but it, it, well, what if they change the law and then it could become a felony、uh, without、uh, of, about owning、uh, gold, gold、yeah. without reporting it, right? So. Those things,、uh, real estate can be、uh, quite risky because it shut up that much, it could possibly go down, at least to, back to ten years or twenty、right. years. So all the things that it got inflated could go down. So there is no safe investment. That is something you have to really know. So whatever you invest could end up in half or thirty percent down. So instead, I recommend people start looking at invisible assets. Because、uh, what if、um, you lose everything overnight?、Uh, if you have gold,、uh, what if the government tries to take away to pay all the bills and stuff, which is really happening in China, by the way. Really. So, if that happens,、um, I guess you have to be prepared for uh, uh, unthinkable situations. But as I said, if you have so many friends who can support you financially or emotionally, you're okay. So instead of、uh, having so much money in the bank account, you should have the trust and uh, um, uh, strong connections with、uh, friends around you, and also reputation with your clients.、Mm. So when the next、um, uh, financial system sets in,、uh, we might you end up using the same、uh, currency worldwide because there could be a big crash. You know, you know the,、uh, China is falling down because of the、uh, real estate crash. China is yes,、wow. um, and if you Google it, you can see it. And then、uh, all the people、uh, who have to pay the mortgage for the buildings that's not even built, they started uh, not uh, 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 paying for the loans. Really, wow, which is a big deal. So、uh, either way, from、uh, somewhere there could be、um, the start of the cr- the crash. So whatever happens. If you have the strong connections with people around you, you can start over from a、uh, yeah from、uh, zero from zero. I asked you this in our last interview. I said,、mm-hmm. "Okay, I can't imagine you've lost all your money、mm-hmm. right now,、mm-hmm. and you had to make a million dollars in a year."、Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember your answer, but I asked you this, and you said, "I said, what would you do?"、Uh-huh. And you said, "Well, I would just call my friends up and say, <laughs> 'Can you give me money?'" I call ten, twenty of my friends up and say, "Can you give me a hundred thousand each, or can I stay in your house for free?" And you would offer a service to those wealthy friends、uh-huh. that you've created trust and in, in invisible assets with, right? And sell them something new or whatever it might be.、Mm-hmm. And it's because you have great relationships, right? That's why you could do that. Yes. So what I'm hearing you say, Ken, is it's important to invest in yourself, which is. Developing more cre- credibility,、mm-hmm. uh, respect, and a better reputation、mm-hmm. with your friends,、mm-hmm. your colleagues, the industry you're in, your team, things like that. So that if that happens, you'll be able to get something going again. Yeah. So in a sense, I am having a huge deposit to people's heart.、Mm. I have given away my booklet for free to 2.3 million people. Wow. So I have a list of those people、uh, that I have given away. Right. And so they feel like they owe me. That's why they're buying my books and、right. courses. So I have、uh, a huge, huge sort of invest, invisible asset and trust already saved up. And I've been giving away for so many things for the past twenty years. I've、uh, done lectures for free.、Mm-hmm. I've done so many uh, um, uh, volunteer work for、right. the people who are in need. So I have this reputation and trust among people. So、uh, in the next situation. So whatever happens,
uh, I can say, I'm going to talk about uh, the next situation and how we can build our assets in the you know, new currency system, right, right. new financial system. A lot of people want, want to listen to me. So I have built enough credibility. So that's why I'm not afraid of going sure. bankrupt. Because uh, if I go bankrupt, I can say the joy of bankruptcy. You know, I can just say eight steps to recover from bankruptcy. <laughs> right, you have a new book. <laughs> right, whatever that what is. I did, and I'll teach you how to do it. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm not worried uh, uh -huh. about anything at all. Yeah. Instead, we have, to, we have to let everybody know that if, the, if something big is going to come, it's not as ba bad as World War II. So we can all get uh, go through mm -hmm. this together. Yes. But we have to help one another. Mm -hmm. That is a key. Yes. So that is uh, also a concern I have for for uh, about us because uh, our hearts are so separated because of the politics, or religion, or the scarcity mentality. So um, we are having less uh, compassion mm -hmm. toward each other. Sure. So I think uh, for the next few years we're going to experiencing. Uh, we're going to experience a lot of um, anxiety really? and worries because of what's going on in Ukraine and, and everywhere, right? Everything we see is depressing, to be honest. It's very depressing. Right. But at the same time, it's not as bad as 100 years ago. True. So uh, When everyone was starving. Yes. Right. So we can go through this. But uh, to do this, we have to be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. We have to show our generosity. So if you feel like you have more than enough, you have to start sharing what you mm -hmm. have at the, at the worst right. time, uh, which, is, which, which could come in years. When do you, I mean, if you could predict, obviously no one knows, but mm -hmm. how do you think there's going to be a bigger recession or some mm -hmm. type of crash in some way mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. economy or in the world? And when do you think that will happen? I see, um, I already feel it in 2023. Uh, so you think next, next year, next year wow. because a lot is going to happen with the U.S. election and also the uh, potential uh, conflict in China and Taiwan and also uh, the, the gas shortage and everything. Uh, and also uh, uh, so many tons of uh, uh, food is uh, wheat is stopped at the port of Ukraine, really? wow, which yeah. could cause a starvation in African countries. So we're going to see a lot of chaos in the next few months. Really? Yeah, and we're going to experience a lot of uh, gas shortage uh, in European countries, which they're thinking about, because the gas stopped coming to Germany. So a uh, lot mm. of uh, change is going to happen in the next few months. Have you seen any situation with all the people you've helped and inspired and spoken with over the years, have you seen any situation where money buys happiness? Luis, you're asking me so many great questions I would never even thought of. So <laughs> thank you for just uh, of course making me so creative. Yes, so I have seen so many happy stories and sad stories around money because without asking, is people come to me, Ken, do you have a minute? You know, amazing thing happened to me. So I have all the weird and strange stories that people would not believe it. So maybe I'll, I'll come up with a 50 amazing stories, you know, uh, like my mentor, uh, Jack Kianfield, Chicken Soup series, you know. Mm -hmm. He's great. Money, uh, money stories are so fascinating. So uh, a lot of happy money stories. So one time, for example, uh, who was my student who lost everything uh, and then he, he uh, no, she found out uh, that she had cancer she got fired, and then uh, her husband was cheating on, on, on her, and then mm. uh, he left. So she, suddenly she's, she doesn't have a home, she doesn't have health, she doesn't have money. So she stayed with her best friend for a while, and then I just give my seminar for free, uh, like 10% of the seats are free. Uh, so uh, I'm, I give it to financially challenged people now. So she, I think she was one of the, uh, you know, uh, pay, paid for uh, seats. And then she really got inspired. And so she said, within a year, I'll manifest a, like a jewelry designing. I'll manifest a jewelry designer job. And also I'll find in the final independence. Now I'll find my partner, uh, better one than the last one. 
in a year. And I said, a year? Maybe three years, you know, she said, no, 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 a year. <laughs> and uh, after about that, she came back again. And then, then she said, you know, Ken, what, uh, what happened? Uh, she was proposed by a owner of the jewelry store. And then he's, you know, he has some money, you know, he's de dealing with jewelry. And uh, he's such a sweet person. Uh, his wife died a few years before. So he's a very sincere person. So she got the money, the, uh, you know, uh, the love of her life. And then he asked her, uh, I don't know if you like working, but I want you to be part of this designing division. <laughs> and mm. then she got everything. So uh, life is uh, giving you uh, full of surprises if you are ready to receive. Wow, that's beautiful. I'm curious about morning routine of millionaires and those that create financial abundance, what they do in their morning routine to help them attract more abundance. And I have a feeling that you're going to talk a lot about doing the things you enjoy that bring you more happiness and fulfillment in the morning so that you can be energetically a magnet for more opportunities during the day. But what would you say are some of the habits of happy millionaires where they're happy, healthy, living a rich, full life, but they're also able to create financial abundance? For me personally, I always start thinking of fun things uh, that are going to unfold during the day. Like oh. this morning, I woke up five, five and start thinking, oh, you know, I'm, I'm on Louis show. Thank him. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking you in, in my imagination. Thank you, Louis, for inviting me. I can't wait to see. And uh, I have another interview right after this. It's a Japanese interview. And I'm very uh, so happy to do that. And also uh, another meeting with uh, uh, my editor. I'm finishing another book. So that wow. would be fun. And then a few other things. But so I just start uh, sort of like uh, rehearsing uh, my, my day. And then uh, imagine uh, people that I touch. I'm, I'm going to touch through you, Luis, especially mm. with you. I'm going to touch many people's heart with this. So... I really appreciate you for giving me this opportunity uh, to be able to connect with your friends and viewers, your fans. Absolutely, It's such a great honor. So uh, I feel so overwhelmed by the appreciation and, uh, and wow, this, think of this ripple effect. If 10,000 people really get it and then start treating them more nicely, their family members start saying thank you five times more than they did, What's going to happen? So I cannot uh, you know, stop this excitement. So when I am full of excitement, I got to get out of my bed <laughs> and then start my day. Sure. So that's something you do. You really think about thanking the experiences that will come in, appreciation in the morning. Do you do anything else for yourself personally? Or do you, have you heard of any other routines or habits of people that what they do in the morning? Yes, Luis, we're the same minds because I always ask the same question to other people. <laughs> you know, I, can, I, I can write a book for, for you, you know, uh, the yeah, morning yeah. habits of Japanese millionaires, right? I like that. Well, I wrote a, I wrote, I wrote a, I wrote a little mini book called The Millionaire Morning, which is, which is the habits and routines. But I'm always curious if there's other stuff in different parts of the world that people do to, to bring in wealth and, and abundance. Yeah, so a lot of Japanese millionaires, they have a little shrine in their homes. So uh, it, it, it's a mini miniature design of a, a house. I have it in, in my uh, pr private office. And they always pray uh, mm. for just a minute or two, uh, sort of like a meditation. And uh, this is like an appreciation exercise. So thank you for just, you know, uh, for letting me be alive and thank you for... Uh, my family's health, thank you for my business. And they all pray for the success and prosperity for their clients and customers. So a lot of millionaires, they pray for uh, customers and clients here, so uh, their happiness. So uh, I think that's uh, probably the common Japanese millionaires' attitudes. They pray for their customers 
and uh, customers, clients, and then their employees. And uh, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm happy and open for new opportunities. So that's how they pray to their ancestors and to the 8 million gods around us and mm. start their day. Wow, that's beautiful. Anything else? In the morning, you know, there are, uh, you know, no identical things because some people skip breakfast, others eat big ones. And uh, I don't see any correlation with uh, health either. And people are fine with only one me meal a day. People sh uh, uh, who eat eight meals, small meals a day, they're both perfectly healthy. So I think it's probably up to you how you find your own uh, sort of like a secret. Because yeah. it's very different, and your wife could be different. So right. you really have to find your own uh, habits and own lifestyle. And if you f like it, uh, you can keep going. So I think the only criteria, if you if it doesn't go, uh, if that if you cannot continue, that's not your thing. Right. Right. Yeah. So don't please don't force yourself to do it. <laughs> yeah. What about people, what about relationships, the people we choose to be in relationships with, whether it be our intimate partners, um, our spouses, how important is it for us to be in the right intimate relationships in our life in order to energetically also bring in wealth? I think uh, partnership is uh, one of the most important ones because if you say you have 100 energy and if she or he has 100 energy, if it's multiplied, it becomes 10,000. Mm. But if it's minus, 100 minus 100 is zero. Yeah. And if you, even if you're 100, if he or she is minus 100, you become minus one, minus 10,000. Wow. So you, uh, it, I think it's uh, uh, the same with your uh, team. You really have to find a uh, trustworthy person uh, who um, who can multiply with you. So mm -hmm. I'm very picky about who to pick. Uh, very sincere, trustworthy person. So I can um, I can give, I can just have my secretary manage all my assets, uh, and then I'm okay. I, I trust her with all my all, all my life, and all my mm -hmm. people who are working with me have been working more than ten years. Wow. So I I trust them with my life. I hope uh, that they, they trust me with their life. So uh, I think we have this very strong, uh, deep bond. So um, if that happens, I think miracles keep happening. And that's how I uh, do business here. That's beautiful. Do you think it's Do you think it's easier to build financial abundance when you're in a beautiful, flourishing, intimate relationship, or when you're single and alone? So I don't want to sound judgmental. Uh, it's almost like a trip. You know, uh, some trip, it's more fun to be alone. Yeah. But if you just can't, uh, bring your friends like f uh, uh, four or five, that's fun. And if you bring your mate, you know, husband and a wife or a girlfriend and boyfriend, that's a different kind of fun. So if life is a trip, do you want to go solo or do you want to do with a couple? Uh, do you mm. want to go with a group? So um, I think the business is the same. So uh, yeah. personally speaking, I like uh, my life with a partner uh, and with my trusted friends. And I, I like, uh, you know, I, I, I like reading tours. Uh, you know, uh, Trip with Ken Honda is a very popular one. You know, I, I'm on the bus and just bus guide saying, you know, uh, <laughs> I bring people to Israel and the U.S. and all kinds of places. It's part of my fun too. But I like my solo trip too. So if you like a solo trip, that's beautiful. And if you like a trip with uh, your partner, that's beautiful too. So it's up to you. Yeah. And what is the Zen approach to investing? And what type of investments should we be making with our money, do you think? Yeah, you need uh, uh, three hours uh, <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> because I was with my Zen master, Warren Buffett Zen master, right? So uh, he, he said, uh, he, you should invest in a company with a virtue, with a business code. Uh, if the company has a high virtue, uh, they're going to flourish. 
mm. if the company puts uh, 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 money first, they're going to go down eventually. So Interesting. you have to find a company with a high virtue and, uh, and, 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 and high self-esteem. So I asked Wahe, uh, so uh, how can I find a company with a virtue? And he said, uh, if you don't have it, you cannot see it. <laughs> so mm, that's, that was his answer. So find a company that has a great business code and motive, and that company will flourish. And, but that depends on the management team and the uh, 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 creator of the company. Uh, and, and if that person dies or gets sick, the company kind of goes down. Mm-hmm. So you really yeah. have to uh, see that. Um, that's what Y has said. But uh, just one tip about investing. Uh, these days, uh, just the uh, regular people started asking me questions about investing. And I think it's a bad sign. You know, remember a shoeshine boy asked um, a wealthy businessman, what stock should I buy? And then he, he went back to his office and sold everything. That happened in 20, uh, 1929. And then the similar things I hear now, very young people in the, in the high school day age, they ask me, uh, Ken, how can I start investing? And I think it's a bad sign. So... I think why is it ba- why is it a bad sign? Because uh, I feel this, this this we are approaching to the end of the uh, capital capitalism system we've been developing at least for the past seventy years after the war uh, Second World War, and it's quickly changing. So uh, I'm not commenting. I'm not going to comment on what's going on right now, but w- at the rate of it's going, I think we're going to experience something big uh, fairly soon. So really? I cannot advise, I mean, pr- that's my personal sp- uh, speaking. I can advise uh, unexperienced, uh, inexperienced investors to come in now because they mm. become usually the victim of the high uh, over, overvalued uh, price of stocks. Mm-hmm. And the same g- thing goes with big coins. So, right. you know, I cannot advise uh, that... Uh, all the things that may work for the past two years or may five years yeah. or 40 years may not work from mm-hmm. now. That is uh, right. something that you really have to watch out because all the people in North America, they've only experienced uh, good times. Uh, you know, there was some bad time. But in Japan, uh, we've been struggling after the bubble burst uh, 30 years ago. So we have a better experience of what, ha- what could happen next. And I think China mm-hmm. is going to experience that. And so would, would be the world. So I think we have to be wow. ready uh, for the potential crisis. Let's say uh, someone has an extra million dollars in the bank. Um, or let's say you had an extra million dollars personally. How would you distribute that into an investment? Would you keep some of it? Would you invest it back in your business and hiring people? Would you invest some in stocks or real estate or cryptocurrency? What, what would be your philosophy of how you want to invest that to appreciate. I did a, a seminar with a few thousand people uh, a, a year ago and then a few months ago. But uh, this is a tricky subject because uh, if people watch this a year from now, it could be a different story. It be different. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Course. So I don't want to comment on uh, the detailed ones. But I think anybody, what anybody can do is investing your friends. You know, take your friends out for dinner uh, and then become close, uh, closer or just uh, give something to your clients and, and the customers. So I think it's a better investment than investing in bitcoins and gold and all the other things. Because if, if uh, the next financial crisis happens and then you lose everything, as we said, you know, go, uh, go back to your clients and then start ask, ask them to start business again. And if you have done some good favor, say uh, give uh, $100 worth of something to 10,000 people, you, that's ten, uh, $1 million, but they remember you. Mm-hmm. So uh, there is a better chance of uh, getting your business back in the next um, um, age. Actually, that's right. what I did 20 years ago. I had an extra $1 million 
I wanted to try it out. Uh, this fun ex experience. I already uh, heard of this. What you give will come back to you, and I didn't buy that. So okay, I'll, I'll just test it. So I printed my booklets uh, for about three thousand. I started with three thousand. I ended up giving uh, two point three million copies of my free booklets. That cost me about three million US dollars. Wow. But anyway. So by the time I gave away my booklets for about 100,000 copies, which cost me about 100,000 US dollars, a publisher called me and they want me to write a book. And I did, which the rest is history here. But, wow. Uh, so I gave away my first uh, million dollar project, right? And look what happened. Uh, I sold more than 8 million copies of my physical books. And... Uh, all my seminars and all the uh, other services. So the, the 2.3 millions I gave, gave away came back uh, so many times back. So if you have an extra $1 million, do good for the society. Do good for your clients. They remember you. They trust you. So uh, I had a good reputation. Still, I do because I gave away my physical copies for free. And I paid even wow. the postage. At that time, nobody was doing it. People thought I was crazy. No, I was <laughs> because I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to try uh, this philosophy. Is that really true? What you give will come back? And it, it, it wasn't true. It, it came back 10 times more. So, you know, it's not equal. I love that. I love that you I love that you say to invest in your friends because when I 2007 I guess 14 years ago when I had nothing literally nothing I was living on my sister's couch for about a year and a half I was making again a few hundred bucks a month at the beginning then I started to make more all I said I have nothing I can't buy anything I can't do anything for anyone I can't you know Really, I, I felt kind of helpless. And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this. All I'm going to do is start investing and in learning about other people, seeing what their greatest need is, where they're struggling, where their challenges are, and try to find someone else who can help them. And I was building this incredible network of people. I was using LinkedIn at the time to network. And I would just get on the phone with people and ask them stories about how they overcame their challenges, how they became successful. I would learn about it. And people really enjoyed sharing their story of success or overcoming challenges. And I'd say, well, what's your biggest challenge right now? And they'd say, well, I'm looking to hire this type of person or I need an engineer or a copywriter. And I was talking to all these individuals from all walks of life that I was like, well, I know a great copywriter. I know a great engineer, a great person for social media. I'd connect them. They'd maybe do business or they'd figure out other solutions. And they'd always come back. Both would then thank me. Thank you for that introduction, that connection. And they'd, they'd want to help me further down the line. And I think when we invest in people, when we invest in friendships, like you said, relationships, and just reaching out to friends and saying, hey, what are you up to today? How can I support you? What's the biggest need that you have? And trying to be a solution that will pay 5, 10, 20 years down the line. Definitely. And the, the game gets easier. Once you get the ball gets going, you, know, uh, you have more power to help. And then people will appreciate you more. So uh, the game will be uh, easy and easy. Once you go above the line, you will, you cannot lose because yeah. uh, uh, don't you don't you uh, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. Once you you are over a certain yeah. level, uh, it's just a win 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 game. Absolutely. Because yeah, there is no there is no loser in right. happy people's world. Right. What is the vision for your money life? For the rest of your life do you want to die with zero mm -hmm. are you trying to give more of it away are uh -huh. you trying to make more mm -hmm. are you trying to make your container bigger uh -huh. what's your vision yeah to uh i may surprise you but i'm a money indifferent type you're I, neutral i'm not really interested in money really yeah because i'm not interested in growing my money because i have already enough mm -hmm. and i make enough so i'm not uh, uh interested in money even though I'm, a, I'm regarded as a money guru, because money flows enough and goes out enough. So I don't have a goal. I don't have um, any attachment. Sure. And uh, as I said, even if I lose everything, 
my friends would take care of me. Right. So I don't have any、uh, thing. But for, for humankind, I have a vision. I hope、uh, in 20, 30 years, or uh, uh, when I, while I, I'm alive, I want to see human beings can be free from money or money worries. That's why I'm, I'm doing my work、uh, actively in the world. Because I don't need to get something out of people. I'm just here to share. Yes. And if you know how not to worry about money, you are going to do something else. You know, so my question to the, the viewers and, and friends is that if you don't worry about money, just even the slightest bit, what would you do? What is a project that you want to start? And that is something you have to go right away. Yes. What would you say to parents? On the three most important things they should be teaching their children. Okay. As they get into, you know, after five years old,、uh-huh. as they start learning about money and the material world,、mm-hmm. what lessons should tar- parents be teaching their kids about、mm-hmm. money? Yeah. In, in your opinion. Great, thank you. So I, will,、uh, I, I used to, and, and I think、um, I'm still teaching my, my child.、Uh, she's 24, so she's growing up、uh, already. But Uh, what, what, the first thing I would teach is money is fun.、Mm. So, if your kids know that money is fun, so、uh, we used to sit on the dinner table,、uh, just say,、uh, I, I have this, say,、uh, $10,000 to donate.、Uh, what do you want to do? You can you know, help rescue the animals, you can help the environment, you can help the homeless people. What do you want to do? And、uh, when we give presents, Uh, what would you want to do? So, my daughter grew up、uh, thinking money can do so many wonders. So, uh, if uh, all our kids learned money, mag- money is a magical wand to make people happy, I think people are more excited about getting the money. So, they have no negative ideas about money.、Uh, and and、uh, imagine what if all the c h i l d have never been scolded for wasting their money. <laughs> I think we will be、uh, so stress free because a lot of worries come from the, the need for survival and it's attached to right, money. Right. So once we are、um, free of money stress, I think、uh, our life will be so different. Yes. Yeah. So if you can teach money is a, a fun thing, that is a great starter. Okay. Number one, teach the money is fun. Right. And also, I, I, I want you to、uh, teach. Uh, your kids about money and emotions because those things are not taught at school. Uh, uh, because even though、uh, your child is grown up with a positive, positive attitudes, your friends may not. So they, they try to compete with you of how much、uh, they have、uh, allowances or like this is my new iPhone、mm, something、yes. or like this is my sneakers、yeah. or whatever that is. And then、uh, people try to manipulate you、yeah. with emotions. So if you start teaching,、uh, you feel bad about money, you feel ashamed of money, you feel guilty about run, run money, we all feel some emotions. Yes. So if you start teaching emotions about,、uh, around money, I think your kids will be emotionally free. Mm-hmm. From money stress. Yeah, they won't be comparing themselves to others who have more. Right. They'll feel good about themselves. Right. Yeah. And I think related to that, I probably share,、uh, I once shared with my、uh, daughter, you know,、um, I'm not the wealthiest man in, in the world. I, I have enough money, but I don't call myself, you know, the、uh, tycoon or whatever right, that is.、Right. I don't have a private jet, right? So, but I'm financially independent and, and free. So, I、uh, teach my、uh, daughter that、um, about、um, money emotions. And at the same time,、uh, I have a lot of emotions too. Sometimes I feel、uh, guilty. Sometimes I feel shame. Really? Yeah. Around money or around? Yes, around money or everything. Why do you feel guilty or ashamed?、Uh, like, say, all my students have less money than I do. So,、uh, sometimes、uh, I used to feel, sometimes I feel, I'm taking advantage of、really? other people,、mm. right? I don't need to get money. So sometimes I, I do s e m i n a r for free. Sure. But anyway, so I feel shame, a guilty,、uh, guilt around money. So I share that with my、uh, daughter. How do we eliminate those negative emotions? Like, how do you get、uh, rid of those? You cannot. Really? Because it's,、um, it's human nature. As、it's... long as you live, 
uh, say you're very happy, but if uh, the, the, the person right next to you is crying, you know, you feel, you bad. You feel for, sorry for her. So uh, sometimes you may feel about uh, guilt for being happy. So sometimes I'm, I'm, uh, I feel guilty uh, when my friends, <laughs> author friends saying, Ken, my books are not selling well. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yours are selling so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel guilty. I feel shamed. Uh, so many things. So I'm teaching my daughter that this is very natural. Gotcha. But uh, the, the bad things happen if we try to manipulate our feelings by compensating, uh -huh. uh, working hard, by working hard, by saving what. So I, I'm just joking. If I could become a prime minister of Japan, I'm going to print every note of uh, banking note said, uh, making too much, worrying too much, and spending mu uh, too much can be hazardous to your health. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> okay, so the first thing to teach your kids is right. money. Money is fun. Mm -hmm. You can make people happy with it. The second thing is to learn about money and emotions. Yes. That these things right. are natural to mm -hmm. have emotions around it. The third thing the parents should teach kids about money? More you give, more you receive. Mm. So you don't have to work so hard to get the money, <clears throat> but if you want to get more, you have to give more. And to do that, you have to be loved by people around you. You have to have many friends. So to do that, you have to have a good relationship, uh, re relationships with people. So relationships are uh, everything. Uh, and in North America, it, it's very individualistic. So you eat uh, your own food, you eat your own thing, and uh, since you're five, you are so used to taking examinations. You never had examinations with three of your best buddies and coming up with the right answer. Yeah. I think we should, but it's so individualistic. So you cannot talk with your friends while you're having an examination. You can't collaborate. Yes. Right? Uh, uh, hey, Bill, what do you think? Uh, number three. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't work that way. And then it's up to your 20s and 30s. So. Uh, especially in North America, everybody seems isolated because you cannot talk about your sexual problems or financial problems, your emotional problems with your best friends. Mm -hmm. So you hang out and go to be, go go you know for a cup a glass of beer and just watch the the sports. Yeah. But you have you're missing out the most quality moments, which is share your problems because your best friend may have the exact. Problem. I know, you might have a deeper connection. Right. Yes. So you have to really have um, this mentality of being supported by friends. Mm. So do more and receive more. Mm. So uh, by hearing that, you know, you don't have to worry about taking advantage of other people. Uh, something is not fair. The rich is doing something bad. It's nothing. Uh, it's not over your problem. You focus on what you give and what you share, and then you receive. Right. So as long as you know the uh, rule, you can focus on what you give. Yes. And yes. so uh, attached to that, I teach my kids uh, f to follow your heart. Mm. So just follow your heart. That is a guidance. I love those, those points for parents to teach kids. Mm -hmm. Speaking of parents mm -hmm. uh, and moving to a related topic, mm -hmm. how does sex and money play together? I cannot, uh, I cannot stop talking, you know, you need five more hours. <laughs> <laughs> and I think American people are especially interested in this. Yeah. Uh, money and uh, uh, sex have something in common. It pulls out the best and the worst of you. Mm. And it, it, it pulls out the best emotions and the worst emotions. Because it, it, they, they can show uh, you, you both heaven and hell. Right. Because a lot of crimes happen because of these two. <laughs> it's true. So wow. uh, with your financial problem and sexual problem, you get the worst out of you. You hate yourself by being such a jerk mm -hmm. or a you know, bad, bad girl. So um, it pulls out uh, a lot of emotions. So you have to be careful because you never know what you get. And, and because it's so suppressed deep with, deep within, but in other words, um, money and sex can be a great healer because it can transform your life. You say healer? Healer. Healer. Yes, mm. it can transform your life. That's why I call myself money healer. Uh, if you heal money, uh, you can heal so many things. Wow. And, uh, and, and money and sex are doing the similar things. 
Really? Because it's so attached to your self-worth. Like say, how many people are confident about their sexual situation and financial situation? Not many, maybe it's one or the other, but it's usually not both. Right, yeah. and the people who are bragging about their happiness, they may be over just yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the situation. And so inside, we feel so vulnerable. Mm. We don't know how much satisfaction we're giving to a partner or we are we getting from money. So we feel so vulnerable and mm. shameful mm. and guilty around sexual uh, issues and money issues. So it gives you such a great opportunity to uh, look at yourself and who you are. So um, especially around those two uh, topics, mm -hmm. you feel like you want to prove something, that you're good, and making money and at sex. Right. And, uh, and then at the same time, we fail the test. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. By looking at our bank statement, we fail the test. By looking at our, our, our partner's face, mm. you know, just a little tiny oh, yeah. expression. Oh, Disappointment, you know, like, yeah. I'm disappointed, you know, or I, she or he is disappointed. So there is a lot of uh, discouragement issues mm. and it could dep depression. Should we try to heal the sexual side first or heal the, heal the money side first? Uh, whichever you wish. <laughs> <laughs> so some people want to heal the sexual uh, thing first and some people, the other people uh, feel, um, you know, they're, um, they can handle money. For North American people, sexual issues are maybe a little easier because financial part, it, uh, I've seen so many people just freeze, you know, uh, right. when they are thinking of money. So maybe if, uh, for North Americans, uh, money could be a little more tough. So you'd say if you can heal money, the topic of money within yourself, mm -hmm. that should support you in healing other areas of your life as well. Of course, of course, uh, because you don't have to prove yourself. So um, how much money you have or how much money uh, you make has nothing to do with your self-worth. So I'm just a happy, uh, happy, uh, I, I learned new English expression. Yes. I'm such a happy camper. Happy camper, <laughs> yes. So uh, it doesn't uh, have anything with my financial relation. Yeah. So, so if you can find your happiness on your own, uh, you can really focus on what you want to do. Because I, you don't really care what other people think or how successful mm -hmm. I need to be. So um, if you have that mentality, you can enjoy every moment. Like in this interview, I'm just having a yes. great conversation with you, yeah. Luis, right? I'm, I don't have to prove my points. I don't have to sell more books. I'm just hoping that uh, our conversation uh, can open doors for yes. people for their peace of mind. Absolutely. It's, it's funny you're saying this about uh, healing money mm -hmm. because I've had so many conversations this year from different experts, mm -hmm. from therapists, from money experts, from athletes, from just people in life. And the th common theme about how to live a better life, mm -hmm. your health, relationships, money, business, your sports, and how to be more fulfilled mm -hmm. is the first step is to heal something. Heal the past, heal your relationship, mm -hmm. heal your relationship with money. It starts with healing first. Mm -hmm. And when we can create a healing environment, we have more peace. Talking about uh, you know making peace with your money, mm -hmm. it's healing first, and from a peaceful environment, we're able to flourish. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes. We're able to grow. We're able to expand to right. see the best of ourselves mm -hmm. actualized. Yes, you said it so beautifully, and uh, uh, it's not just uh, uh, one thing, uh, one time only. It's an ongoing process. The journey. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't think I'm 100% healed. I sometimes cry over money. Sometimes I cry over certain things that happen in my family. I have still a lot of shame and guilt and a lot of excitement and happiness too because I'm alive. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not perfect at all. So people are surprised. You're a money guru. And how can you feel guilty? <laughs> but I do. Yeah. And to be honest, that's where I am. What's the biggest challenge you have yet to overcome in your life? The biggest struggle challenge for me it's a false humbleness you know I, I'm so happy so I feel like I don't have to do anything anymore so I'm I, I have a, a nice um, a retreat center up in the mountains in Japan yes so I'm happy to grow my own veggies mm. you know just um, 
uh, in my garden, and it's so beautiful flowers. I'm missing them so much while mm -hmm. I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can be so happy with where I am, but I know I can be contributing more too. Yes. So as much as I know I can be contributing so much, but I want to um, uh, make sure that I'm happy as well. So my false humbleness uh, tends to lead me into uh, small happiness. Mm. So um, I'm sort of um, going back and forth. Yes. Uh, but coming here and having chat with you makes me so excited about the potential mm -hmm. of what I can do. That's great. So I appreciate you so much for bringing, uh, uh, pulling out the best from yeah, me. Yeah, of course. So um, that is my next challenge. I love it. Uh, I'm going to take you up on it, Ken. When I come visit Japan for my first time, I have to mm -hmm. say hi to you and, and uh, right. you have to show me around a little bit. Uh -huh. But uh, I am so... Uh, excited about the mission you're on to mm. teach people about how to heal right. their conversations around money and giving us you know it's a scary thing for a lot of people they feel like it's extremely complicated yes. but you simplify it mm -hmm. you simplify it in this book happy money which I want everyone to get make sure you guys get a few copies for your friends this is really powerful you have a lot of great content at uh, kenhonda.com and on your social media You've got a course as well that people can check out around mm -hmm. finding peace with their with their money, and that's at KenHonda.com. I believe that as well. Uh, so I'm just so grateful for you still wanting to live a life of service and teaching us these things, mm -hmm. and not just sitting in the garden all day long. <laughs> but I know you need that time as well. Yeah, but I probably feel very bored. <laughs> exactly. <because> I, <laughs> I wish I could see Louis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I asked you this question before. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious if something else has come up for you. Mm -hmm. So this is the last couple questions. Yes. This is called the three truths. Mm. So imagine it's your last day on earth, many years away. Mm. You get to live as long as you want to live, mm -hmm. but you have to call it your last day. You write an, another thousand books. You do all the things you want to do. <laughs> right. But for whatever reason, all of your work, your books have to go with you. Mm -hmm. So we don't have access to this conversation, right. this book anymore. Mm -hmm. Hypothetical. Mm -hmm. But you get to leave behind three lessons to the world, three mm. truths that you would share. Mm -hmm. This is all we have to mm. remember you by. What mm. would be those three truths? Mm. Uh, you're asking so many beautiful <laughs> questions. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by that. So I think the first thing I would say is life can be fun. That is probably well, one thing I would say. And uh, the second thing I would say is uh, when you wonder, jump, is what I'd say. And the third one would be enjoy every moment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, something bad, something good, but both can be fun later on. So uh, when you feel a call, just do it. And yeah. if it messes up, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It could be a fun memory in the, in, yes. in the future. Yes. So um, it's nothing to do with money. You know, just follow your heart. Yeah, it's beautiful. Ken, I want to acknowledge you again. Thank you for the work that you do. I want people to get the book, Happy Money. Thank you for your contribution, the way you consistently show up for the world, for mm -hmm. your communities, uh, the way you've shown up on this episode and for the School of Greatness community. So I acknowledge you for Thank you. your talents mm -hmm. and starting to write the use these talents in your 30s mm -hmm. to contribute to so many of us. Uh, final question, what is your definition of greatness? Uh, greatness is uh, the state that you, you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're, um, I learned an expression in English, if you're comfortable with your own skin, yes, I think that is what greatness is. Mm. So you if go. you are truly who you are, uh, on, your, on your own style, I think that's greatness. Mm. What would you say is the secret then to creating abundance financially in your life when most people struggle or fail to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I've been talking about this um, over the past 20 years. And there are so many as aspects of uh, abundance. You know, uh, I call it vi visible assets and, and invisible assets. So uh, financial value is just just a very short um, small portion of your abundance but uh, 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 that is not included in the package I guess so that's why we obsessed about making money 
or we jump onto these investment ideas, and and that's an interesting cultural phenomena. Gotcha. What would you say? So the invisible assets, would you say those are more important to learn about and master in order to create abundance over the the visible assets? Once again, invisible assets is part of your life. So if I say um, uh, like going on fishing with your friends is so much fun f uh, for me, I'm not interested in doing much business. So uh, by uh, American standard, I become a loser because you know I'm <laughs> I'm going uh, enjoying fishing with a bunch of my friends, but they could be old millionaires, you know, who retired early. But I think uh, um, going for fishing uh, with a bunch of friends are not as respected as uh, going on like a venture cap, you know, venture business and trying to make money or just you know to start a, a company with your visions. So I think it's a criteria. Uh, uh, in, do you focus on more relationships or peace of mind? And the peace of mind is is an, uh, the most uh, precious invisible assets. But a lot of people trade for money. And that's a sad thing. Um, all over the world, people do that. Uh, we think we have to do it to, make, to bring food on the table. But is it really worth it to... Um, uh, to trade with your peace of mind or uh, with your integrity. Mm. But unfortunately, many people do that. Is it possible to create peace of mind abundantly and also create profitable financial abundance at the same time? Yes, that's what I've been teaching. But uh, you have to prioritize it because uh, all your questions come from, at the end, I want to be rich. <laughs> so can you give up the idea of becoming a rich? Because you have to uh, let go of this idea of uh, becoming wealthy financially. My mentor, um, who is called Warren Buffett of Japan, uh, he said, if you want to learn uh, uh, about money from me, you have to forget about money. That was his mm. first request. <laughs> like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> you know, you're like, but how do I make more money? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so how can I how can I learn about money if I forget about money? So he said, you're obsessed with money making uh, ideas. So unless you forget about money, I cannot teach you about money. So his teaching was very zen. So I might be confusing a lot of viewers at the moment because I, uh, a lot of people always think, okay, Ken, that's great. And then how can I make And then how do you make money? <laughs> so you have to forget it, at least for the next uh, half an hour or so. When you forget it, what should you be focusing on instead? What is the most important thing in your life? And, and that could be your family. That could be your hobbies. That could be uh, certain causes. And, mm -hmm. and if that's more important than money, you should go for it. And uh, I can teach many ways to invite money in after uh, you find what you do. But mm. there are only two kinds of life in, uh, on this planet. Uh, kind of like that you follow your heart, do what you enjoy. The other one is uh, the life that you cannot enjoy. So a lot of people choose the path that you cannot enjoy as long as they can make money. And then they think, okay, if I make enough money, I can retire and start doing what I want to do. But uh, it doesn't happen that way. You'll be lucky if you can make a, a lot of money and then retire. But because you lose a lot of moti uh, motivation, you lose a lot of energy if you go take a path of making money. And then uh, you cannot make money. And even if you're lucky and you, you made it, you don't know how to look for happiness because you sacrifice all the uh, happiness and your peace of mind for money. How can you change the attitude? It's, it's very difficult because uh, all you think is uh, it's just, just a simple uh, thing, you know, uh, efficiency. How can I cut cost? How can I increase mm -hmm. my wealth? But think about uh, it this way. Um, if you just make a lot of money outside, but if you come home, 
do you always talk about cutting costs? You know, don't waste your time with your kids. Because all the fun time with kids are wasteful, you know. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> right, pull, right. pull out all the tissue papers, that's a lot of waste. You know,、uh, making a, a pizza with your kids, it takes three hours or four hours. <laughs> If you're a business owner, hire somebody to do it for you. <laughs> right, right. Order from delivery and it's going to taste better. <laughs> yes. Or like a cooking something with a family takes three or four years, you know, and making terrible pastas. They don't look good, they don't taste good, but it's、right. fun. So, but oftentimes we, we tend to think like, well, we should hire somebody, we, we should outsource it. But how much do you want to outsource? Because you're losing all the fun. So, that is my point.、Mm. So, we should be forgetting about money initially for a moment and thinking about what are the things we enjoy doing the most? What are the things that bring us the most fulfillment, the most peace of mind, the things that bring us alive? And, and just get, getting back to that place as opposed to first obsessing over money first. Remove the obsession and focus on the enjoyment. What happens when we come from a place of enjoyment in life? Does money start to flow more effortlessly when we're being that way? It depends. Because if you're doing a volunteer work,、um, money may not follow. So,、uh, one of my national bestsellers is do what you love and make sure money follows you.、Mm-hmm. And that means There are so many starving artists. They do what they love, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can make money. Right. So you have to make sure it's a two different things. But I think if you do what you love, definitely you become happier、mm. and less stressed, and you'll be more attractive as a person. And that person、uh, has a better chance of making money if they choose to.、Mm-hmm. But just once again, forget about the money part because. Uh, making money is just,、uh, I'd say, f- one of 14 fields in, the, in life.、Um, you know, your self image or your sense of contribution,、uh, you know, connectedness,、uh, sense of、uh, being connected、uh, with nature is often forgotten in the Western world. So there are many fields of happiness. So if you focus only one or two, business and money, You, tend, you cannot see all the other 12, for example.、Mm-hmm. And so, and what happens if we don't do the other 12 in our life? Are we missing out on something? Or is it I think you just、hurt? become a very boring business machine. Got it. Yeah, you just talk about money or business all the time. And then、uh, I, I have a few friends like that. Yeah, he's fun as long as we talk about business. But If he is, you know, if the topic goes on to, on to art, music,、uh, or like life, he, he doesn't,、uh, he suddenly becomes quiet because he has nothing. He has no art. He has no music. He has no girlfriend. So, you know, <laughs> no food. He doesn't, you know, he only eats just quick burgers and,、uh, you know, energy bars.、Mm-hmm. Just to have enough energy to go make more money. <laughs> yeah. So, I want to say there are so many、um, different fields than money, but we think that、uh, making money is the most important. And it's so sad because we are exchanging our life force energy with、mm. salary. So、uh, it's almost like we're cutting a piece of our, our, our body parts. And if we do that, you know, that's illegal. But if we just、uh, cut up a piece of our life, which is time, Somehow it's, it's okay. Why, why do you think people are so bad at attracting things they want in general? Maybe not even just money, if we're forgetting about that, but if they're wanting to attract a, a great relationship, great opportunities, great friends. Why do you think we're, in general, humans are bad at attracting what's really healthy and good for them? I think everybody's attracting what he or she wants. So I think、uh, the, the question should be. Uh, why uh, do we keep attracting what we don't want? <laughs> so,、uh, because、uh, I think everybody's attracting what he or she truly wants. Uh, you know, uh, one of my students was uh, attracting uh, bad guys no money, no work, and terrible with uh, uh, he, he always cheats.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, she knows that. But she bumps into, I mean, she is a master of finding one bad guy out of a thousand good pe- guys. You know, I'm sure there's so, someone like that in North、sure. America too. So、uh, yeah. she is good at sensing, she's good at spotting, 
she's good at finding、uh, a bad person. So, in a sense, she is,、uh, she is a master of attracting that person. So, I think uh, attract, uh, attracting what, what we deserve or attracting、um, who we really want is uh, uh, like clear, clarifying who we should、uh, attract is more important. So, but, but you know, that's how life goes. Yeah, so clarifying who we should attract as opposed to who we shouldn't be attracting, is that what you're saying?、Mm-hmm. But unfortunately,、uh, my friend's mechanism psychologically,、uh, she is not ready for a good, honest、mm. person because she gets excited when she gets abused in a certain way. Interesting. So it's a, a programming. So you have to really、uh, start healing yourself. Otherwise,、mm. you don't know what, what,、uh, what to want.、Uh, so, I think the tragedy of this、um, planet is people are confused about what they want. So they're complaining about what they attracted. And at the same time, okay, this is life. So part of them are、uh, depressed and also given up. And somebody like、mm-hmm. very, very, very few people like yourself, Luis,、um, know sort of like how to get out of this、uh, you know, box. You know, and then. And look at yourself like, oh, I was a battery. <laughs> and then stuff starts flying, right? Yeah. I'm curious. When I was、uh, younger in my career, I was, I was broke. I was living on my sister's couch. I was making, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks a month, maybe,、um, in Ohio, in America. And I had a mentor that I was learning from and I was working for. And I was just kind of taking on every different job I could at this place. Uh, to learn as many skills as possible. And, and after six months, I was trying to do my own thing on the side as well. And after six months, I remember saying to him, I was like, man, I, I feel like I could really use some money right now. I feel like I'm still struggling and it's, it's no fun just being broke every, to- every day and relying on other people to help me financially. I could really use some money. And he said something to me I'll, I'll always remember. He said, money comes to you when you're ready for it. And I, and I was like, I feel really ready though. I feel like I'm ready to make some money, you know? <laughs> like, bring it to me now. I'm, I'm, I need this. And he said, it'll come to you when you're ready for it. And it, it started to come maybe a year later. And then it started to really come the next couple of years. And I look back at that always. And I think I wasn't ready at that time. I, I wanted it, I needed it potentially, but I wasn't ready for it. How do we reprogram our minds? To either heal or shift our perspective to be ready for the money, the relationship, the, the healthier opportunity for us? I think the question should be what do you need, why, or in, wh- why, what do you need the money for? Unless you're clear with what you want to do, I think you will never be ready.、Uh, I, I have a, a, you know, young, young people like your young, per, you know, your young person back there. Back then, say, Ken, I want to make one trillion dollars. <laughs> I want to be a、what? billionaire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and I say,、uh, what, are you use, what are you going to do with the money? And he, he says, I don't know. <laughs> and if you don't know, you don't need it. <laughs> and、mm. then、uh, people say, I need a million dollars. And I、uh, ask, my question is, why do you need the money? And they say, I want to feel secure. So、uh, do you think one million would be enough? And she or he would say, Oh, three million, please. <laughs> and then life doesn't go that way. Money comes after what you give out to the world. It's、mm. just a reward.、Uh, I'd say, to be precise, it's just a, one portion of the、uh, prize or reward that you've given out so much to the society. So that's why my mentor said, Forget about the money. You know, you have to focus on what you want to put out. So, If you put out so much, ready or not, money will come.、Mm-hmm. Just, just think about it. If you come up with a great app on iPhone and then release it、uh, worldwide,、uh, like or not, ready or not, money will come, flood in. So if you find、um, something that will、um, change the way people live, or、uh, if, you just, uh, if you can offer something to the world that people love enough, To pay you, there will be money. 
So uh, if you get stuck with a mind game, uh, you have to really look at the reality. Uh, otherwise, you have to get stuck uh, in this place of I have low self-image. That's why I cannot make mm -hmm. it. You know, um, it doesn't really matter. You don't need confidence. You don't need a uh, college degree or MBA. Uh, all you need is curiosity. Mm. What if I become that? What if I, I have a million dollars? What would I do? And if you're so excited about the way to spend your first million dollars, you will find uh, the shortcut to the million dollars. But by the way, uh, the first million dollars you make, uh, you're going to waste your money anyway. So <laughs> as you know, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, the first million will be uh, spent on something stupid. Somebody takes mm. it. That's uh, uh, sort of like a membership fee. Mm, yeah, the price to admission. Yeah. <laughs> Wealthy per people's club. So your first meeting will be lost anyway. And I've, lo uh, I've written a book on, on those. But uh, but if you know, and if you have this mission and passion of how to spend your first one or $10 million, you are on the right track because uh, now the energy will uh, support you. Whatever positive affirmations you can come up with, I think anything is good. But I think uh, money is my best friend is a good affirmation. When you worry about money, uh, I, I, say, I would say money is love. So when you think, in my head, money is love instead of money is a scary person. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you feel uh, a lot less stress. But how does someone, if they've lived in stress around money for mm -hmm. their whole life, mm -hmm. their entire life, they've been afraid, how can they start to use that affirmation and how long will it take for them to start to believe it, to feel it? So I think you have to um, think back, look back on your relationship with money mm -hmm. since you're five or six. We wake up to the reality of the world when we are around five, six, seven. I used to be a volunteer at my uh, daughter's uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked uh, one, of the, uh, one of the boys at the kindergarten, and uh, what are you gonna get for Christmas? And he said, no, Santa Claus is not coming. And I thought, oh, why, why is that? And he said, because my, my, how, my parents are poor. <laughs> Interesting. Well, really? Who told you that? And he said, my mom. <laughs> wow. So, like, we are waking up to the reality when we are small. And then since then, we've had so many negative messages around money. So uh, I have a fun collection of saying uh, when I visited uh, Europe a uh, few, few weeks ago. There's uh, uh, the th all the sayings that uh, we are told since we are five or six money, they don't go, grow on trees in America, right? Yep. If you don't have money, you don't have a head. You know, that's a scary thing. Sure. <laughs> so uh, all those phrases keep telling us that money is not a happy thing. But when you start thinking, you must have some fun memories too around money. Mm. You know, a certain gift that you're so uh, happy to receive and uh, the scholarship or the happy money that you get from your grandparents or your parents or friend, you know, they buy you for um, Christmas gift or birthday present. There is so much happy money in your life, but you uh, forget because we are so overwhelmed by the stress around money. Right, yeah, maybe there was a trip you went on with a friend or family, you, right. went, you went on an adventure, and that mm -hmm. money provided that memory, that experience for you. Right, it was right. worth the money, right? right. There's a, a happy saying. Yes. So there are many positive sayings around money as well. And, and you grew up in Japan, is that right? Mm -hmm. And so in Japan, are people just as anxious and stressed about money as they are <laughs> in America? Or is there a different belief around it? Yes, we have a uh, different kind of stress, <laughs> you know, because it's so interesting. In North America, when, uh, say, your college buddies, right? After 20 years of uh, um, graduation, you bump into one another and you don't, you don't ask each other how much do you make a year, no, right? In, in U.S., no. No, right? right? And in Japan, we, we casually talk about it. You talk about how much you make? Yes. Really? But in North America, I think you're going to lose a friend right. if you bring that uh, question. Why do you in Japan, do people in the culture talk about money and how much someone makes mm -hmm. more frequently? Because I think uh, how much you make is not as tied up with how much, uh, uh, how much your worth is. But in North America, it seems culturally, it's not, not, nothing wrong, but how much you have or how much you make 
equals how much you're worth.、Mm. So it's more、uh, taboo here. But it's, what's it's interesting is like when you grab your Japanese、uh, uh, you know, friend and then ask him, How, my, how many times you have sex, he's gonna freak out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, But in America, people might talk about it more. Right. They will probably you know, enjoy about talking it about it, right? So I think there's a different kind of taboos. That's interesting. Which I really enjoy so much. That's interesting. Now, with the culture of people just talking about it more openly、mm-hmm. with their friends or、mm-hmm. family, what does that do for the culture then around money? Does it make it less scary? Does it make it more effortless for people to work? What is that like? And in China too, you know, people、uh, casually ask you how much you make,、really? or how much money you have, or how much.、Uh, Strangers too, or just yeah, friends? Yeah, and also friends, uh, uh, and also、uh, like how much is the rent,、mm-hmm. or how much does this、uh, condo cost? You know, like uh, 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 what's the weather today?、Mm-hmm. You know, the Siri would answer you, right? So it's as easy as that. So in a culture like that,、uh, people are more、um, open and they can uh, uh, confront、um, themselves. About、uh, what's working, what's not. But in North America, everything around money is such a taboo that it's a,、uh, it seems, because I've, I've been listening to many couples、mm-hmm. in America, it seems like it's almost like a, a taboo for a couple to talk about money. It is. Unless something really comes up and it's like、right. an eruption of a volcano. Sure. But you should talk about it long before the mug, you know, the, the eruption. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So do. People in relationships or married people in Japan, do they talk about money pretty frequently? Do they talk about it before they get married? You know, is there stress around money in the couples? Of course, definitely.、Yeah. That's why my books are so popular in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so,、um, I mean, it's the same, but it's a kind of different、uh, stress. Gotcha.、Uh, and and、uh, um, in Japan, of course,、uh, you fight over money, but、uh, surprisingly, women are more in control of money. Where, really? Yes. I mean, probably like for, from American culture, guys control it. But actually, all my friends, you know,、um, guy friends, you know, they are、um, controlled by their housewives. They, they control the money. Right. And they, they're given a certain like, allowance money. The men? Yes. Are, they, are the men making the money and then giving it to the、right. women and saying, okay, tell me what to do? Yeah. So one time I talked with a housewife uh,、um, in Japan and, and she said, You know,、uh, I'm, afraid of, I'm afraid of money. And I'm so worthless because I'm not making money. And I asked ask him, but who, who is financing the you know, whole thing? And it's my husband. So, you are,、uh, you know, ma'am, you are the business owner. He is a worker.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, sure. You get the fruit. The, the woman's the business owner. Right. The man is the worker, as we're saying. <laughs> right. Interesting. Yeah. And then she said, yes, I never know that. You know, I've never known. So now I'm going to make him work harder. <laughs> Everybody laugh. <laughs> make more money for me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's a different kind of stress, but it's so hard for us to really confront financial issues because we have、um, so many emotions、yes. around money. It's universal. I, lo- I love your point where you said in North America, in America,、mm-hmm. most people tie their self worth、mm-hmm. with their net worth. Yes. Right? Their bank account, how much is in there,、mm-hmm. how much they have. With how valuable they are as a human being,、mm-hmm. right?、They're, the quality of their character and how they add value in the world. Right. But in Japan, I'm hearing you say it's less that way. It's more、yes. people don't tie how much money they have、mm-hmm. with how good of a person they are. Yes, and also、uh, like how many friends you have, not on Facebook, I mean, real, right, right. <laughs> real friends. And also, like school teachers are so well respected, for example.、Uh, you know, they're not making so much money, but、uh, o- occupations like that. Uh, are highly respected. Really? But here in America, it seems like there's not much respect for school teachers,、mm-hmm. which I feel so、uh, sorry about.、Um, so uh, uh, if you make money, you are golden in America. But、uh, there, there must be some kind of criteria, like how much you're contributing to the community or how, satis-、uh, how much satisfaction、exactly. you get out of work. But just numbers. Yeah.、Uh, they don't really translate into well, happiness. Well, I think you see that in America where there might be a lot of people who have a lot of financial success.、Mm-hmm. They have a lot of money, but their relationships are broken. Their、mm-hmm. marriages are fall apart.、Mm-hmm. They're, you know, they don't feel good about themselves.、Right. They don't have fulfillment, right?、Uh-huh. Because it's been focused just on money、mm-hmm. and not on service. How can I add value as well? Yes.、Right? So I think it's important to be aware that a rich life. Is not just about how much money you make.、Mm-hmm. It's about 
how good you feel about yourself yes in your life right exactly yeah. exactly i'm curious what do you think are some of the beliefs that hold people back from keeping them to create the wealth that mm -hmm. they want to have from mm -hmm. making more money what are some of those beliefs that says i'm not able to do this because mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. because we feel so unworthy for the abundance mm -hmm. so uh, uh it doesn't really matter how much money you make or how much money you have after paying all the bills you don't have much money left <laughs> taxes bills everything. right yeah. if you pay uh, if you make uh thirty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or one million dollars because the cost is going higher your you, lifestyle yes. right and, and you used to have one car second hand car now you, you need Tesla, you know, mm -hmm. that, and uh, you need second home and third home. So you really have to uh, see um, how to satisfy with yourself with less. Yes. And at the same time, um, you can have more. So you can, you can have more than necessary. But uh, um, the food prices are going up and the gas prices are going up. So we're almost like drowning in the sea of bills yes. and then they're just you know going up and then we are drowning in that in that right so instead of feeling that or overwhelmed by the bills you can be creative and come up with the ideas that you can contribute to the world so by doing more contribution you get more money mm -hmm. so uh, if you are more creative about uh, serving the world serving other people with your gifts with who you are you can create the flow of happy money, and as a result, you can receive more money. And if you can control this greed in you uh, that I need to have more, mm -hmm. it's almost like you're brainwashed by marketing <laughs> techniques. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though you're wealthy, you keep complaining about um, how much you don't have. Once I had an interview with a, a, a private jet owner, and I thought, you are such a big success. And he said, no, 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 I'm just a small thing because uh, my, when I pull over to this uh, special in the terminal. It's a bigger jet. <laughs> there's a lot bigger jets, and mine is so small, you know. It sits only six people, so I feel so small when I pull over with my Mercedes, because they're just uh, Rolls Royce and all the big cars, and then <laughs> I feel so small. So you have to ask yourself, when is enough? How much is enough? That's when I... Uh, my Zen uh, teaching comes in. Mm -hmm. You have to know who you are and you have to know the uh, right money container size. I think we're born with a certain money container size. Really? What does that mean? And say uh, some people are not equipped with so much money and you don't need so much money. So you can uh, be satisfied with uh, less. Uh, like say if you're um, um, a school teacher, mm -hmm. you don't need to have three Mercedes Benz. And you don't need to live in a big mansion. So uh, if you feel like, oh, I don't need uh, to make that much money. I know how to satisfy myself. And you can do that. I live a rich, fulfilled life with what I make. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So instead of just going uh, pursuing wealth, you can find invisible assets, which I also teach about. I haven't really taught in English yet. But there are you know, visible assets and invisible assets. And in fact, invisible assets are super more important than uh, visible assets. What are some examples of invisible assets? Like friendship, mm -hmm. trust, happiness, love, generosity, kindness. All the great things in life are invisible, mm -hmm. but yet people can feel it. You know, uh, if you bump into somebody and if he or she is so kind, you feel it. Yes. So unfortunately, generosity and kindness are not regarded as a great thing. But I mean, in, and in North America, I've seen news that people just, you know, uh, do something right. And then they turn uh, their wallets to the owner mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they're happy stories. So people uh, still respect yes. uh, honesty is another one. So there are so many great uh, assets that uh, we have. But we, when we look at our lives, we evaluate to zero. So even though you, you have um, not much in your bank account, if you have so many friends, and if you have so many people who, that you care about you, uh, you're in heaven. Yes. But uh, you look at your bank account, and then uh, if it's a small number, 
you get depressed. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at invisible assets, and you should be happy. And focus on the invisible assets as well. Yes, yes. because I'm, I'm sort of joking, you know, uh, uh, even though you don't have any money, if you have more than 50 friends who let you stay for one week. Okay. You're rich. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you can stay, sp spend the whole year right. by visiting your friend. Yes. And after one year, you can go back to your friend number one and say, it's been a year, how are you? I have a, a great friend, his name is Jesse Itzler, and for I think at least one year, maybe two years, when he was in his early 20s, he stayed on like 10 different friends' couches. Mm. He didn't have enough money to make, pay for rent, but mm -hmm. he had friends that he stayed with that all of them are still his friends today. He's in his <laughs> 50s, Yes. 30 years later, and he's an extremely successful business entrepreneur now, but he had a free place when he had no money uh -huh. because of his generosity, yes. his kindness, his honesty, his lovability, all those mm -hmm. things, which are invisible assets, right? which turned into financial assets. Yes, later, right? yes. And talking about uh, in invisible assets and generosity, I so want to show my appreciation to American people. Uh, 30 years ago, um, uh, 30 some years ago, I was 19, mm. and uh, I made up my mind to explore this kindness factor in North America. And uh, I came here with uh, without much money, and um, I tried to have a, a one-year experiment. Really? Depending on generosity of American people. When you were 19? Yes, and I bump into, like say, uh, an old man in, in, in the park, and then I ask him, uh, uh, is there any restaurant that I can eat for at the very, very, you know, no money? And he said, okay, I'll take you there. And they pay for my dinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't have any place, uh, why don't you stay with me? So ho for whole year, in 1987, I depended on American people's generosity. And after one year, I had the same amount of bank account uh, m money, and then I could go back. Wow. And I've been writing you know, my, uh, my experiences like that, and it's a national bestseller as well. So uh, America is so generous. And I think people may not feel if, because you're living here. So I really uh, believe in American people's generosity and openness. Uh, some people just let me stay as long as they, uh, as long as I wanted. Wow. Yeah. So I, um, I, I still uh, feel like I, I, I owe America a lot. That's beautiful. How many people helped you in that year? I think probably at least 16 or, uh, or 20 people. That either paid for something or let you stay at their place or yes. helped you in some way? Yeah. So whenever I bump into an American young people, like, okay, I'll buy you lunch and dinner <laughs> in Thailand. So I bump into sure. American tourists, you know, like backpackers. And okay, I'm going to pay your uh, lunch because somebody else, an American, oh, man. just uh, they, they pay mine. That's beautiful. So I try to pick up uh, uh, in a tab. Uh, for Americans especially. That's interesting because when I was in my early 20s struggling financially, mm -hmm. I was reaching out on LinkedIn to uh, business leaders, mentors that I thought could help me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them took the time to take me out to lunch and they would pay for me because I, mm -hmm. I couldn't afford. <laughs> right. And that was happened for about a year and a half where mm -hmm. I didn't have the money to pay for my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really, I remember saying like, feeling really bad that I couldn't pay for myself mm -hmm. and saying to myself, like, if I make money one day, I want to make sure I pay as many meals as I can mm -hmm. with friends and things like that. So I always try to pay. It's so hard for me to let someone pay for me now mm -hmm. at a restaurant mm -hmm. because I'm like, I just want to keep paying it forward. You uh -huh. know? That's beautiful. Um, but you never know the impact you can have on someone mm -hmm. with a gift, you know, yes. with a financial gift. So I want to ask you about the money container mm -hmm. size, which I think is interesting. Do you feel like we're all born with a certain size of a container mm -hmm. for how much money we should be able to bring in? Or does the container expand and grow based on our environment, yes. on our who we grow up with, our mm -hmm. wisdom? Can you of talk course, about that? Of course. Like, uh, uh, say, like some scholars you know, who are not interested in money at all, they focus on their research and what they can uh, do academically. So uh, their um, money container is small, but they're okay. Uh, right. I call them uh, money indifferent type, by the way. Money different? Money indifferent type. Money indifferent. They, they, have they don't no care interest. about money. Yeah. Yes. and uh, Just so, enough to provide for their food yes. and their house. Yeah, so, and... so some uh, government workers, like politicians or nurses, I see them among you know, uh, those occupations who are giver, who are just service people, right? And like some military people yeah. who are really into service. And then right. they don't really care 
uh, how much they have, as long as yeah. they can, you know, make a living. Right. right. So, so those people are born with small ones, and of course, by learning about business and investment, you can make the, your uh, money container bigger. Right. But there is a little bit of a difference、um, here when you want to grow your money container, because in North America and Europe, I often get asked by、uh, interviewers, Ken, how can I make My container bigger, right? <laughs> But in Japan, in the in the East, I get different kind of question about my container.、Uh, the question would be, Kim, how can I be satisfied with what I have instead of just trying to make it bigger?、Uh, But I don't know how to do that. So can you teach me how to satisfy myself with where I am? So it's a different approach.、Mm. So you need to have both. Is there any other final lessons that you would share from your Uh, mentor, that we should be thinking about as we as we go into the next、uh, moment of our life after this、uh, interview. So、uh, one thing I learned from my mentor Wahe is that、uh, he focused on receiving well,、mm. uh, both good and bad, because we tend to want, we、mm. want to receive only the good things. And、so, like,、uh, if if we pray, God, please give me good things, not bad things. But you know, good things could be bad things, and bad things could be good things. You never know.、Uh, the worst thing that happened to you could turn out to be the best thing in your life five years later. True. So, you have to be a master of receiving it well. So, I try not to judge things on the. Uh, on the on the surface, you know, I cannot really judge what's inside from the from the、uh, gift wrap. It might be wrapped well, <laughs> but I don't know what's inside. So I try not,、uh, not I try not to judge、uh, when something comes into my life. I try not to judge、uh, if it's good or bad. I receive it well. Wow.、Uh, you never know because it could be bad. It could be good. So. I let go of my judgment. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this a good decision? Is this a bad decision? I, I've learned how to trust myself and how to trust my intuition. So、mm. even though the things that may not go as I want it, I think、uh, if it's my destiny, the door will open. That's my philosophy. So when you feel stuck,、uh, don't worry about it. it. Just you know deep. Uh, get a few deep breath, and just figure out which door will open for you, and your your best friend or somebody will open doors for you. It's it's usually the people,、mm. and、uh, and、uh, and incredibly, oftentimes、uh, a stranger or people who don't know much who don't know much about you could offer you money, the opportunity, a new guest room, or whatever that is. So just, I think the world is so generous, full of love. So trust, life will take good care of you, especially in hard times. Yeah, that's beautiful, very beautiful, Ken. I've got、uh, two final questions for you, but before I get into those questions, I want to highly recommend people check out your book, buy a copy, buy a few copies for your friends. It's called Happy Money: The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money, and a lot of my Viewers and listeners, specifically in the, you know, North America, who maybe grew up more shy around money or insecure or didn't have the, the right lessons or teaching from their parents or society about how to just talk about it, how to think about it, how to approach it. I think it would be really ha-、uh, helpful for so many people to dive into this message and get your book. I know you have many other books as well on this topic, but I, I think people should start there.、Uh, if they go to your website, KenHonda dot com. They can see all of your information there. They can get the book there. It's obviously on Amazon and everywhere else. And you're all over social media. Happy Ken Honda. You're like the happy. You're like the happy money Buddha. You know, it's like you got. You're like the happy guy. So I like that.、Um, you got the panda, the happy pandas in the background, and the video. You got everything here.、Uh, so people can follow you on social media as well. And is there before I get to the final couple questions? Is there anything else we can do to support you today? Thank you. I'm、um, so happy to share what I know about、uh, money and happiness. So、um, I'm so excited that I finally get to share 
my ideas and philosophy that I learned from many great mentors with English speaking people. I'm working on my English, so、uh, I'm, I'm just、uh, getting there. <laughs> but, You're doing great. <laughs> but this is such a fun journey for myself. So I, learned, I want to learn more about you, and、uh, I want to more about、uh, different cultures. They all fascinate me. So as much as I talk, I want to listen too. So I want to, one day I want to have a chat with you. Yeah. Learn about money. With one another. So,、uh, we started a community called Arigato Living Community. So, uh, um, we have uh, uh, 20 different country、uh, participants. So, if you're interested in learning with these,、uh, just Google that、uh, Ken Honda Arigato Living Community. And、uh, we do monthly calls and have a friendly chat like this. And this is the happiest time of my, of my life. So, I always appreciate. This、uh, fun cultural exchange for me.、Mm, that's beautiful. That's really cool. We'll make sure to link all those up as well、uh, and, make sure, and make sure you guys check that out.、Uh, Ken, final two questions. This one's, called the th- this one's called the Three Truths. It's a question I ask everyone towards the end of our conversation. It's a hypothetical question. So、um, imagine many years away, it's your last day here on this earth. And you have accomplished all of your goals, all of your dreams, your, you've lived the life. But for whatever reason, Ken, you've got to take all of your books and all of your messages and groups and podcasts and interviews and content, it goes with you to another place. So no, no one has access to your information anymore or your content. But you get to leave behind three lessons with the world, three things you know to be true that you would share with the world. It can be any lessons. I'm curious, what would be those three truths for you? Three? Huh, interesting. I think the first one that、uh, comes into my mind is life can be more fun. Yeah, that would be the first one. Okay. And uh, also, uh, life is more fun when unexpected events keep happening.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, because.、Uh, I really mean it because, you know, life brings me a lot of surprises. Yeah. And、uh, the, the, the third one is, I think, probably relationships、uh, are everything, is everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Relationship is everything, is what I would say. It's a beautiful truth, Ken. I want to, before I ask the final question, I want to acknowledge you, Ken, for, for being such a, a great guide for so many of us. Uh, specifically over the last two decades, and for all the efforts you're going to continue to do for the rest of your life, for your ability to bring clarity, your ability to bring peace on your stressful topic for a lot of people around money, your ability to simplify things, and your ability to remind people that happiness, joy, love, appreciation, friendships are the most meaningful thing. And those things, when you appreciate them, Will bring you other opportunities in your life. So I really acknowledge you for your gift, your creativity, and your talents, my friend. And I'm excited to, to connect in person, hopefully in Japan someday in the near future.、Um, my, my final question is what is your definition of greatness? I think the definition of greatness is knowing who you are and stay happy with it. I hope that answers the question. Did I? Perfect. That's perfect. Yes. Ken Honda, thank you so much for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Luis. This is such a great interview. You're such a genius interviewer. And, and you know, now I know why people love you and respect you. So <laughs> Thanks, I my send my, all my love and respect for my newfound brother. And, so, and also the viewers, thank you so much for spending time with us. I really appreciate every second of you spent. The time you spent with us. So thank you, thank you. Arigato, arigato. And what are the qualities of that person that you could embody? That, that's the key, right? Because it's, it's not about wealth, it's who you become,、mm-hmm. right? Because people think it's about their wealth, but it's the becoming process, it's the overcoming. That attracted that, right? Of course. So then 